kwenye nyota na vitu vya mbinguni the wind na kwenye upepo and other elements in the air na vitu vyote vilivyoko kwenye hewa we reverse those curses in the mighty name of Jesus Christ tunareuza hizo laana zirudi zilipotoka katika jina la Yesu every satanic word kila neno la kijetani that has been spoken over decades over centuries na zilizoachiliwa kwa miaka na karne against this nation of Tanzania kinyume na taifa ila Tanzania by those whom the devil has deceived na kwa wale waliodanganywa na shetani we declare a reversal of those negative words tunatangaza kurejeshwa kugeuzwa kwa hizo hizo laana in rulership kwenye utawala we declare that there is alignment tunakiri na tunatangaza ziingie kwenye kwenye mpango in governance we declare that there is alignment kwenye kwenye serikali ninatangaza vikae vijipange we say every negative word kila neno hasi which was commanded in line with the ordinances of the moon and the stars dilivyo lililotangazwa kulingana na sheria za mwezi na nyota which affects the governance of this country ambavyo vina a vinaleta madhara kwa serikali ya nchi we say every negative word in line with the ordinances of heaven na tunasema kila neno hasi lirudi na kukaa kwenye mpango wa mbinguni is reversed even today linargeuzwa leo we say just like in the days of tipora na tunasema kama wakati ule wa siku za debora the stars of heaven nyota za mbinguni they will cooperate with our march na zita eh, zitashirikiana na na na, ka, na na jeshi letu they will cooperate with our quest to extend the kingdom of god in tanzania zitashirikiana na kiu yetu ya kusababisha ufalme wa mungu uendelee tanzania we declare that if in as jesus christ walked on water na tunakiri hata wakati ule yesu alipotembea kwenye kwenye maji there is nothing which is linked to water wind or anything which will hinder us hakuna chochote kitakachotuzuia kwenye maji kwenye upepo when we are doing crusades rain will not be used against us tutakapokuwa tukifanya mikutano ya injili mvua zitaenda kinyume na sisi when we are doing open air crusades rain will not be used to disturb our crusades na tutakapokuwa tukifanya mikutano ya injili mvua haitanyesha kuzuia mikutano yetu ya injili bodies in the air bodies in the solar system they will cooperate with our quest to extend the boundaries of your kingdom mimi amini mili au maumbo yaliyoko kwenye nyota kwenye mfumo uko mbinguni yatashirikiana na sisi katika kupeleka na kupanua ufalme wa Mungu. We declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Tunatangaza na kukiri katika jina la Yesu. That ordinance is linked to the sun. Kwamba hizo sheria lazima zitambue. They will work in alignment with your purpose for our lives. Zifanye kazi kulingana na makusudi ya maisha yetu. That will be accurate ili lisiwe sahihi in our alignment katika mwelekeo wetu when it comes to even the festivals of the lord ili hata katika watumishi wa mungu the feasts of the lord kwa ajili ya watumishi wa mungu that father we are coming into alignment as the church of god na baba tunakuja katika mwelekeo kama kanisa la kimungu that in our communities kwamba katika jamii yetu will not allow freemasons hauta ruhusu hawa wa freemasons will not allow people of other religions huta ruhusu watu wa imani nyingine to harness the ordinances of heaven against us kutawala au kufaidi matunda ya sheria za mbinguni in alignment in the heavenly tunaamuru kukaa kwa mbingu kikusawasawa those who are in darkness tunawach tunawafungua wao waliokonyekisa those who have been blinded using the ordinances of heaven hao waliopewa upofu kwa kutumia sheria za mbingu right now in the name of jesus christ chilia nuru sasa juu yao katika church that evangelism will be fruitful tunakiri kwamba uinjilisti utakuwa wa mafanikio that all evangelism efforts will be fruitful in tanzania kila uinjilisti utakuwa wa mafanikio hapa tanzania that evangelism in dodoma will be fruitful in the name of jesus christ uinjilisti hapa dodoma utakuwa wa mafanikio katika jina la yesu that evangelism in kilimanjaro will be fruitful in the name of jesus christ uinjilisti katika kilimanjaro utakuwa wa 
release him into the desert and will be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. That is why release him in Arusha will be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. That is why release him will be fruitful all over Tanzania. Because right now the ordinances of heaven are aligning with your will. That the ordinances of heaven are aligning with your purpose for this place. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That if he decisions. The season, the natural seasons are cooperating with your will for us. Everybody of Christ. Father, as we gain more understanding about these ordinances, we will cooperate with you in bringing your will and your purpose to pass in our generation. Father, we declare that we shall not live in ignorance anymore. Like, not like Joshua. We will be able to command even the sun to sign and to cooperate with your will for our lives. That's like Joshua who lived in the Old Testament. We will be able to command even the sun to cooperate with our evangelistic activities. We will be able to command even the sun to cooperate with our soul winning activities in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Father we declare in the name of Jesus Christ that we will not be victims of heat waves we command all the heat waves to come to a standstill we command all the droughts to come to a standstill in the mighty name of Jesus Christ as intercessors Father we declare that our revelation will only increase about how to harness how to harness all these ordinances that you set in place in the heavenlies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in Jesus mighty name we pray oh Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We say, Father, may you grant us knowledge. May you cause us to know even your will. Baba tusaidie kujua mapenzi yako. So that you will not live in ignorance. Baba ili tusiishi katika kutokujua. But that ujiwa. like your people in the Old Testament. Kama watu wako katika agano la kale. Will walk in perfect knowledge of your word. Walijua neno lako kwa ukamilifu. That like Jesus Christ who commanded the sea to be still. Na Yesu Kristo aliamuru bahari kutakimu. Baba tu command the sea. Na tuwe na uwezo wa kuamuru. We'll be able to command bari. the sun and the moon. Tuweze kuamuru jua na uwezo. To cooperate with your will for us. Kushirikiana na mapenzi yako kwa jina. In the name of Jesus Christ. Katika jina la kula Yesu Kristo. We thank you Lord. Baba tunakushukuru. In Jesus mighty name. Katika jina la Yesu lenye nguvu. Hallelujah. 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 Let us give thanks for God. Tumpige Yesu makofu makubwa na Hallelujah. 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 We may sit down. Hallelujah. Noise of Kaka. Oh, Shaman Roske Dima. Set a Maya time. I feel the anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, men of God, for teaching us that. You know, I would I would make a confession since 2005. Na ninataka nikiri kuanzia mwaka 2005. There are 
certain prayer points kuna mambo niliyokuwa nikiaombea my, my wife is a witness and even our leaders that I came with na mke wangu ni shahidi hata wale viongozi ambao tumekuwa wamekuja pamoja na sisi it's not something that i speak a lot when i'm with the people because uh, i didn't have a lot of understanding but na, na ni mambo ambayo siongei sana ninapokuwa na watu kwa sababu nahitaji ufahamu zaidi na uelewa zaidi but when i'm alone lakini ninapokuwa mwenyewe when i'm alone as an intercessor kama ninapokuwa mwenyewe kama muombaji uh, i would go in depth in ni, these things ninaenda the ndani sana katika haya uliyokuwa unasema but when i am doing public prayers like when i'm leading intercession lakini napoongoza maombezi i, I would uh, utter words like we speak to the elements in the atmosphere na tunasema tunazungumza na vitu vilivyoko kwenye anga to cooperate with our work as a church na kufanya kazi na kushirikiana na sisi katika kanisa kazi za kanisa we speak to the ordinances of heaven i would even utter such words na ninasema nazungumza na sheria za mbingu to cooperate with whatever we have been commissioned by you to fulfill kuwa na ushirika na lile ambalo tumepewa kufanya kazi so i feel led every time we are doing our annual prayers na nimekuwa nikisukumwa kila wakati tunapofanya maombi yetu ya mwaka to to utter words like that na kusema kuomba maombi ya namna hiyo and the amazing thing is that these words they worked for us na ki, kitu cha ajabu haya maneno yamekuwa yakifanya kazi kwa ajili yetu which is why our intercession we don't pray like other churches there are churches which pray more than us na kuna makanisa yanaomba zaidi ya sisi kanisa letu waliombi sawa sawa na makanisa mengine but uh, because we were praying accurately according to this revelation that we are sharing with us na kwa sababu tunaomba sahihi kulingana na huu ufuno ambao umetushirikisha there are no ordinances in any country which would hinder us from praying for that country na hakuna sheria yoyote katika nchi yote itakayotuzuia wakati tunapoiombea ile nchi that's why god has even used our ministry to speak even to countries where there is no christianity which are islamic countries na ndio maana mungu ametuwezesha kuzungumza na nchi ambazo hata sio za kikristo nchi za kiislam kusema neno la mungu ambapo hakuna watu because before i release a message god to tell me na kabla sijaachilia ujumbe mungu ananiambia before i maybe publish we publish a message on youtube na kabla hatujaachilia ujumbe katika youtube god to tell me to command the elements in a particular country to align na mungu ananiambia ni ziamuru hizo mbingu za hiyo nchi na vitu vilivyoko huko vikae align kwenye, with his will kukaa kwenye sawa na mapenzi yake so by the time i appear on youtube to declare things na wakati ninapotokea kwenye youtube kutangaza jambo i wouldn't worry about how many people are opposing me hainijalishi <laughs> kwamba ni watu wangapi wananipambana in that groundwork has been done na najua kwa sababu kabisa ndani kwamba kazi ya msingi kule chini imeshakamilika. Haleluya. Haleluya. So eh, I believe God will assist us as we go over this teaching. Na Mungu naamini Mungu atatusaidia tunapoendelea kujifunza juu. was being short so I believe it will, it will it will also be translated to English. Na ninaamini ile video ita, itapelekwa Kiingereza pia. Yeah, I I don't think it's too long for it to be translated to English. Na mimi si ndefu sana ya kutafsiriwa Kiingereza. So that this this kind of knowledge can be shared with the rest of the saints. Ili ufunuo huu uendelee kushirikishwa na sehemu ya mbinguni. Because I the question as we were coming. I saw many Muslims na, nime, wearing their 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 clothes to to go to their to na, the mosque. Nimekuwa na maswali nilikuja hapa niona wao wasafeni. What has happened to kuna, Tuesday Wednesday is not a Friday. Kwa ni, nimeona kwa nini leo ni, 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 ni Jumatano sio Ijumaa? Because I used to work Islam, for Muslims. In 1997 I was working for Muslims. Na mwaka 97 nilikuwa nafanya kazi kwa Waislamu. So it it was puzzling to me today is a Wednesday. Na ilikuwa imenipa mshangao leo ni siku ya Jumatano. But I'm seeing them in their numbers just na, moving in the morning. Nimewaona asubuhi wakiwa wengi na tembea. And then the man of God started to explain it answered my question. Na mtu wa Mungu alipoanza kueleza mejibu maombi yangu ma, maswali yangu haleluya haleluya so we need to know these things na tunahitaji kujua hata of them na kuvitumia and uh, I, i i appreciate god because when the man of god was sharing na namshukuru mungu wakati mtumishi wa mungu alipokuwa akishirikisha he made sure that it strikes a balance and uh, that it is clear na ameweka mlinganifu mlinganifu ambao huko sahi wazi He kept on repeating that he is not teaching us to to pray to those 
pot is in the space. Na alisema kabisa hatuombi kwa ajili ya hivyo hatuviombi hivyo vitu. But we are praying to God. Lakini tunaomba kwa Mungu. Our role when it comes to them is to command them. Na nafasi yetu tunapofika hapo ni kuviamuru. Just like Joshua commanded to the sun to stand still. Kama vile Yoshua alivoliamuru jua likae lisimame. If you look at Joshua he commanded to the sun to stand still under an inferior covenant. Na Yoshua aliliamuru jua likae lisimame katika agano lililo dhaifu. We are in a superior covenant. Na sisi tuko kwenye agano lililo na nguvu zaidi. The covenant of Joshua was the Mosaic covenant. Na agano la Yoshua likuwa ni agano la Musa our covenant is no longer the shadow you know Joshua is under the shadow unajua agano letu sio kwenye kivuli unajua Musa Yoshua alikuwa kwenye agano la kivuli our covenant which is the covenant of Christ na agano letu agano la Kristo it is the covenant covenant of the substance na agano la uhalisi lenye lenye picha yenyewe halisi if those who were under the shadow na kama hao walikuwa kwenye kivuli knew how to cause elements in the atmosphere walijua namna ya kusababisha maumbo ya mbingu. elements in space in the heavenlies na ma- maumbo yaliyoko kwa mbinguni kwenye mbingu stars and other bodies in the heavenlies nyota na maumbo mengine yaliyoko kwa mbinguni to align with the will of god kukaa sawa na mapenzi kwa ajili ya maisha yao how much more for us in the substance na yes zaidi sana sisi leo This we are shown by Jesus Christ. Hii tuna uhakika tumeonyeshwa na Yesu Kristo. When he was walking on the waves of the sea like what the man of God read. Kama alivotembea juu ya mawimbi ya maji. Job, chapter 9. Kama tulivyosoma kwenye Ayubu ni slango tisa. He walk on what I also commanded to the waves of the sea. Na hakutembea tu juu ya maji lakini aliamuru mawimbi ya kaiki. And the Bible says we are the body of Christ. Na Biblia inasema sisi ni mwili wa Kristo. And Jesus Christ says in John chapter 8 verse 12. Na Yesu anasema katika Yohana 8 mstari wa 11. I, I am the light. I am the light of the world. Mimi ni nuru ya dunia. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness. Na yote anayenifuata mimi hataenda gizani. But will have the light of life. Na yeye atakuwa na nuru. Which simply means as Jesus Christ walked on water. Na kapti na maana kama Yesu alivyotembea juu ya maji. And he commanded the waves of the sea. Na akaamuru mawimbi ya bahari. We are able also to command even the waves of the sea. Na sisi pia tuna uwezo wa kuamuru mawimbi. To operate with the will of God for our our lives kushirikiana na mapenzi ya Mungu katika maisha yetu it reminds me of a crusade that was uh, conducted by a certain friend of ours inanikumbusha habari ya mkutano wa injili ulioandaliwa na rafiki mmoja wa last year in cameroon in yaonde cameroon mwaka jana kule yaonde cameroon two or three days before the crusade siku mbili au tatu kabla ya mkutano wa injili the weather you know the weather experts they started to predict that there was going to be a, a a heavy rain na wale wa utabiri wa hali ya leo wakasema kutakuwa na mvua kubwa that there was going to be very serious rain in yaonde na wakasema kutakuwa na mvua kubwa sana kule yaonde haleluya haleluya we fasted as intercessors na tulianza kuomba kama waomba kufunga kama waombaji because more than 100000 people were in that crusade kwa sababu zaidi ya watu 100 walikuwa kwenye huo mkutano even outside cameroon na kuna watu wengi walitoka hata nje ya cameroon just imagine rain falling on more than 100000 people Fiki, it would be chaos fikiri mvua inanyesha juu ya watu zaidi ya 100 kutakuwa mvua so we fasted i told the men of god god has given us power to command the rain to stop. Na mimi nikamwambia yule mtu wa Mungu tuna nguvu ya kuamuru kuamuru mvua isinyeshe. Tukaanza kuomba na kufunga familia. Na ile mvua haikuwa in the morning before the crusade. Ilinyesha asubuhi kabla ya afternoon there was no rain. Mchana hakukuwa na mvua. You, you can watch it is just that the crusade is in French but you can watch the crusade. Na unaweza iko kwa Kifaransa hii hii crusade hii Yes nani? which was conducted in Yaonde by evangelist Chris I think it was in November if na, I'm not mistaken. Chris ilikuwa ni cry, nani cry, nani Chris where there was a massive crowd. Kulikuwa na watu wengi sana. 
that rain i believe it was not rain from god mimi naamini mvua haikuwa mvua kutoka kwa mungu which wanted to coincide with the crusade ili ambayo iliingiliana na mtutano it was rain which was engineered by negative forces na ni mvua iliyo ilitokana na wale wengine so winning ili kuzuia ku watu kuokolewa but we stopped it Lakini in the name tuli, of Jesus. Tuliisimamisha kwa jina la Yesu. We stopped it. Tuliisimamisha. I remember the, there is a town where I used to live. Ninakumbuka kuna mji ambao nimekuwa nikiishi zamani. That town is 100 kilometers from where I live at the present moment. Na huo mji ni kilometa 100 kutoka pale ninapoishi sasa. They organized a very big tent in order to conduct a crusade. Wali waliandaa hema kubwa kwa ajili ya kufanya mkutano. A certain prophet has had come to that town which is called Kwanda. Na nabii mmoja alikuja kwenye huo mji unaitwa Kwanda. The the the, the prophet has had come to a town which is called Kwanda. Na huyu nabii alikuwa amekuja kwenye mji unaitwa Kwanda. Haleluya. Haleluya. So we, before she came there was no problem with the weather. Na kabla hajaja kulikuwa hamna tatizo na First day of the crusade. Na, na la, a, of hali, the revival of the tent revival. Siku ya kwanza ya ule mkutano ule le kongamano. Wind came from nowhere. A well wind. You know a well wind. Kimbunga kilikuja kutokea It kisoli. came from nowhere and uprooted that tent and flattened it other people were injured. Na lile kile kimbunga kilingoa lile hema na kuumiza watu. It just stood everything. Na ikaribu kila kitu. I believe such elements we have to stop them. Na ninaamini hiyo in line with what God told us. Unaweza kusimamisha ili viendane na makusudi ya Mungu. Hallelujah. 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 So we thank God for for your teaching man of God. Tunamshukuru Mungu kwa mafundisho yako mtu wa Mungu. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, with your permission man of God uh, we have got a brother and a fellow minister I was just looking for him. Na kwa ushusha yako tunaye kaka na ni ndugu mtumishi mwenzetu yuko katikati yetu alikuwa anamtafuta. Yes, he is present here he came all the way from Nairobi Kenya ametoka Nairobi Kenya hallelujah he came all the way from Nairobi Kenya is seated over there ametoka Nairobi Kenya ameketi mahali fulani pale he's called the prophet John Hagai anaitwa nabi Jonathan John Hagai John Hagai sorry yes he, yes so we we thank God for for his coming tunamshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya kuja kwake We have been communicating since we before from the time we le, we left Zimbabwe. Na tumekuwa tukiwasiliana naye toka tulipotoka lipoondoka Zimbabwe. He said uh, he is also an intercessor. He loves prayer a lot. If you check his channel, they are always praying on Facebook. Na And also they pray on YouTube. Well. Anapenda maombi sana. Ukiangalia kwenye channel yake utamwona kwenye Facebook na kwenye YouTube ni mtu wa maombi. He is the first Kenyan that uh, came to our church. Ni Mkenya wa kwanza aliyokuja kwenye kanisa letu. When we were still in a classroom. So tukilipokuwa kwenye darasa tu. Just imagine someone living in Nairobi. Fikiri mtu anaishi Nairobi. To, to go to a church which is in a classroom in a high density suburb. Na anaenda kwenye kanisa liloko kwenye darasa kwenye mji mkubwa wenye watu wengi. He was still fellowshipping at another church but he, he told us that God sent him to us. Na anasema Mungu alimtuma kwenda kule ili kwa mshiriki. It's seven years ago. Na it's, it's, I think it's more than seven years ago. I can't remember na, but na, mia, mia it's around 2015 2016. Ilikuwa na 2015 toka alipokuja mara ya kwanza. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's when he came to our church. Na ndipo alipokuja kwenye kanisa letu. When we were in a classroom. Ni tulipokuwa kwenye darasa. So he was with one of our leaders in his room in a place with a lot of mosquitoes. I don't know whether there are mosquitoes in Tanzania. Na alikuepo pamoja na mmoja viongozi wetu kwenye eneo lenye mbu wengi. Kama kuna kuna mbu wengi Tanzania. Eat it in mind. Hakujali. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was, he was going to the mountain to pray in our city there in one of the mountains. Alikuwa anaenda kwenye mlima moja kwenye mji wetu kuomba kwenye mlima mmoja. Until mwenye. until his days were over of visiting us. Mpaka siku zake za za, za kukaa kwenye mji wetu zilipoisha. Before he left he declared prophetic messages. Na kabla hajaondoka alitoa neno la kinabii. He said God had told him when he was praying before he left Kenya and also when he was praying at the mountain at one of our mountains there 
akasema Mungu alizungumza naye kabla hajatoka Kenya na hata alipokuwa mlimani kule Zimbabwe akiomba kwa ajili yake. That our church was going to be an international ministry. Na kwamba kanisa letu litaenda kuwa kanisa la kimataifa. Now just imagine telling people in a classroom that they are going to be an international ministry. Fikiri unamwambia watu walioko kwenye darasa kwamba wataenda kwa kanisa la kimataifa. Much as I wanted to hear such a message it was very hard for me to believe. Na ni kweli nilikuwa na hamu ya kusikia ujumbe huo lakini ilikuwa ngumu kwangu kuamini. And then we did a, a greater Sunday what we used to call a greater Sunday in one of the suburbs. Na tuliamua kufanya ibada fulani ya Jumapili ambayo watu wanasema ibada kubwa. At a kubwa. council hall, at a council hall, at a city council hall. Katika nani ukumbi wa walmashauri Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you will see him in one of the old videos he prophesied that God was going to shift us to a warehouse. Na ukiangalia alitoa alitoa mtolea unabii kwamba Mungu atatutoa pale atupeleke kwenye go down eneo kubwa zaidi. Now we have been worshiping at that warehouse for the past nearly four years now. Na tumekuwa tukiabudu katika hilo go down karibu miaka 4 sasa. We have just started to build our own sanctuary elsewhere. Na tumeanza kujenga kanisa letu mahali pengine. But uh, the things that God used him to speak, they have all come to pass. Na mambo yale yote Mungu aliyomtumia kusema yote yametimia. So Hallelujah. he has been a friend of our ministry for many years. Na amekuwa rafiki wa huduma yetu kwa miaka mingi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said uh, he is coming this side to to support the work that we are doing and also to be among the intercessors to pray because first and foremost is an intercessor na alisema anakuja kututia moyo na zaidi kuomba kwa sababu jambo la msingi la kwanza yeye ni mwombaji amekuja kuomba kwa ajili ya ili kongamano before he is a church leader na kabla hajawa kiongozi wa kanisa hallelujah. hallelujah so i felt that it was necessary for me to recognize him na nimeona ni muhimu kwa mimi kutambua uwepo wake hallelujah hallelujah because the bible says he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet na biblia inasema yeye anayempokea nabii kwa jina la nabii will receive a prophet's reward na anapokea baraka za nabii so there are some people who will be re- receiving rewards of prophets na kuna watu watakaopokea baraka za nabii when jesus christ returns wakati yesu atakapokuja who are not prophets ambao hawakuwa manabii when jesus returns wakati yesu atakaporudi and Jesus I mean Elijah is receiving his reward. Na Elia atakapokuwa akipokea baraka zake. The widow of Zarephath will be also receiving a reward na which yule, is exactly the same as that yule of Elijah. Yule mama naye atakuwa akipokea zawadi. Because that's what Jesus Christ. Na hicho ndicho Yesu anachosema. Who is going to be the judge at the last day? Ambaye Yesu atakuja kuwa yeye ndio atakuwa tawala siku ya mwisho. He said anyone who gives a cup of cold water to any of his servants. Na anasema yeyote atakaye mpa ngaa kikombe cha maji kwa mtumishi wangu. Shall by no means lose their reward. Na hamna namna yote atakavyokosa ile baraka yake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we give on away it is true. Na tunatoa heshima wakati inapostahili. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to honor the servants of God who are in this place. Ninataka kutambua na kuheshimu watumishi wa Mungu walioko kwenye hili eneo. Who were generously honored by the men of God yesterday. Ambao walitambulishwa na kupewa heshima na mtumishi wa Mungu jana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to recognize all the leadership that is in this place. Ninataka kutambua uongozi mzima ulioko katika hili eneo. Including the leadership of the nation if there are leaders from the nation among us. Na kutambua pia uwepo wa viongozi wa kitaifa kama wako na wa kiserikali walioko katikati yetu. Who are leaders in various parts of the state? Na ambao ni viongozi katika maeneo mbalimbali ya serikali. Yes, and uh, I would like to also recognize the men of God who invited us. Na ninataka kutambua na kuheshimu uwepo wa mtu wa Mungu ambaye Reverend Dr. William Kope. Reverend Dr. William Kope. Let us clap hands for him. Tupige makofi kwa ajili yake. Let us clap hands for him. Tupige makofi kwa ajili yake. Hallelujah. 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 I pray that God grows the Tanzania House of Prayer. Nina muomba Mungu aikuze nyumba ya maombi Tanzania. So that it will have physical branches 
in each and every i don't know what you call provinces here in each and every province or region in each and every region anatamani iwe na 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 matawi katika kila mkoa and in each and every town in tanzania na katika kila mji hapa tanzania I don't know whether I'm prophesying or I'm expressing a wish. Na sijui kama natoa unabii au naeleza matamanio yangu. Yeah. Lakini kama anafanya vyote. In each and every region. Katika kila mkoa I pray that God gives you land. Na Mungu akupe eneo to build local chapters. Kujenga ofisi kule. Because we need more intercession in a country like this one. Kwa sababu tunahitaji maombezi katika nchi kama hii. For reasons that I can easily state. Na katika sababu zile ambazo naweza kazieleza kila siku. Like the need for churches to grow. Kwa ajili ya kanisa kukua. And the need for everything to come into alignment with the will of God. Na kwa ajili ya kila kitu kukaa kwenye usawa na mapenzi ya Mungu. And for reasons which I may not spell out because of sensitivities. Na kwa ajili ya mambo ambayo siwezi kuyaeleza kwa ajili ya umakini. Because of the nature of your your nation democratically kwa ajili ya nchi yako ilivyojigawa i pray that the tanzania house of prayer ninaomba nyumba ya maombi tanzania will have branches several branches in a big city like dar es salaam ninaomba iwe na matawi mbalimbali katika mji mkubwa kama dar es salaam and uh, here in Dodoma and everywhere hapa dodoma na kila mahali coast even arusha kilimanjaro hata arusha kilimanjaro every place in tanzania kila mahali tanzania that it will have branches iliwe na matawi and because the resources are there kwa sababu rasilimali ziko pale we command the elements in the atmosphere tunaamuru mbingu ziendelee ziwe these resources ziachilie Maliga Tanzania House of Prayer. Kwa ajili ya nyumba ya maombi Tanzania. And we release destiny helpers. Na tunaamuru wale wasaidizi wa umelele of Tanzania House of Prayer. Wa nyumba ya maombi Tanzania. To connect with the men of God and his team. Kujiunganisha na mtumishi wa Mungu katika hili shauri. Destiny helpers from the United States of America. Wale wasaidizi wa wa Mungu kutoka Destiny helpers from China. Marekani kutoka China. Destiny helpers from Russia. Kutoka Urusi. Destiny helpers from the European Union. Wasaidizi kutoka umoja wa Ulaya. Destiny helpers from the United Kingdom. Wasaidizi wa wa kiro kutoka Uingereza. Destiny helpers from Canada. Kutoka Canada. Destiny helpers from the rest of Africa. Wasaidizi wa hatma kutoka eneo zima la Afrika. Destiny helpers from Southern Africa. Wasaidizi wa nani kutoka Afrika Kusini. Destiny helpers from West Africa. Watakaotoka kule Afrika ya Magharibi mashariki helpers from Australia. Na kutoka kule Australia. Destiny helpers from New Zealand. Na kutoka New Zealand. Destiny helpers from South Korea and North Korea. Kutoka Korea Kaskazini na Korea Kusini. Command them to be released in the name of Jesus Christ. Na waamuru waachiliwe katika jina la Yesu. Command them to be released in the name of Jesus Christ. Na waamuru waachiliwe katika jina la Yesu. Command them to be released in the name of Jesus Christ. Na waamuru waachiliwe katika jina la Yesu. Whatever was in during Destiny helpers of Tanzania House of Prayer. Wote kitu chochote kilichokuwa kinazuia hao wasaidizi wao. We arrest it in the atmosphere tunakiondoa katika ulimwengu wa roho kwenye bind it in the atmosphere tunakikamata kwenye mbingu we command growth for the Tanzania House of Prayer tunaamuru kukua kwa nyumba ya maombi Tanzania we declare that they will even have a presence in other countries na tutaamuru iwe na eneo nafasi katika nchi Tanzania House of Prayer will be replicated in other countries na nyumba ya maombi Tanzania in one form or iwe, another in the name of Jesus Christ iigwe katika nchi nyingine and that will advance the purposes of God ili kusababisha makusudi ya Mungu together with other intercessory ministries katika ushirikiana na waombaji wengine katika huduma nyingine na tunatangaza that even people who are non christians na tunaamuru hata watu wasio wa kristo muslims and hindus wa islam na wa hindu they will facilitate the work of tanzania wa wasaidia kazi ya nyumba ya maombi tanzania in the mighty name of jesus christ katika jina la yesu lenye nguvu You know do you know why I'm saying that? Unajua kwa nini nasema haya? For Joseph to be elevated he was elevated by God through a pagan. Na ili Yusufu ainuliwa alinuliwa na Mungu kupitia wapagani. 
even Abraham he became wealthy through king Abimelech Pakan na unajua hata Abraham alikuwa tajiri kupitia mfalme Abimelech ambaye alikuwa mpagani even when you look at Daniel he was elevated by God through Pakan kings na unajua hata Daniel alinuliwa na Mungu kupitia wafalme wa kipagani and all these people that have mentioned they were living under the shadow na hawa wote waliishi katika agano la and we are living in the substance na wali, na sisi tunaishi katika halisia we who are living in the substance sisi ambao tunaishi katika halisia are commanding the king up melech of this nation na tunaamuru mfalme abimeleki wa nchi king up melech of this generation na mfalme abimeleki wa nchi whatever belongs to the intercessor ministry na kuachilia kile kinachotakiwa katika huduma ya Mungu to whatever belongs to thorp the tanzania house of prayer kuachilia kila ambacho kinatakiwa kusaidia nyumba ya maombi tanzania all the intercessors kila waombaji who are not yet aligned ambao hawajajiunganisha with what God is doing through the Tanzania House of Prayer na kufanya kile kuna kile Mungu anachofanya kupitia nyumba ya maombi Tanzania we can a connection a divine connection inasema neno la kuunganishwa kimbingu and an alignment na waingie katika mpango mmoja because Tanzania House of Prayer As far as I understand it is not a church. Na kwa sababu nyumba ya maombi Tanzania kama navyoelewa sio kanisa. It's a network of intercessors. Ni muunganiko wa waombaji. Who are praying for God to move upon Tanzania. Na ambao wanaomba Mungu atembee juu ya Tanzania. We declare that there will be no ill feeling. Na tunaamuru kwamba kuwe na kujazwa mafuta. Among the big bishops in this nation. Juu ya maaskofu wakubwa katika hili taifa. I declare that the big bishops in this nation. Ninatanga za maaskofu wakubwa katika they will avail their premises na wataachilia maeneo yao for Tanzania house of prayer to do the work of God na kwa nyumba ya maombi Tanzania kufanya that kazi big denominations na madhehebu makubwa those that was founded from within Tanzania ambao yanapatikana ndani ya Tanzania those that come from elsewhere na yale yanatoka mahali pengine that will cooperate with the work that God is doing na watafanya watafanya Tanzania house of prayer na kazi ya Mungu inaendelea kupitia katika jina la Yesu Kristo we break every barrier tunavunja kila vizuizi every barrier of religion kila vizuizi vya dini every barrier of religious division na kila kizuizi cha dini we destroy every barrier in the name of Jesus Christ tunavunja kila kizuizi katika jina la Yesu Kristo na tunakitangaza that the work of Tanzania house of prayer kazi ya nyumba ya maombi Tanzania generally accepted itakubalika that those who have got money na hao tuliwaamuru whether they are christians or muslims kama ni wa kristo au jews au wayahudi they will avail the resources that they have wataachilia mali zao for to be done by this ministry kwa kazi ya mungu inayofanywa na huduma for to be done by this ministry kwa kazi ya mungu inayofanywa na huduma hii Those people who don't know Christ. How are sio mjua Yesu? Who are sitting on large tracts of land. Na wanaokaa kwenye hilo eneo kubwa la ardhi. I declare that they will release it. Na ninaamuru waachilie. You know um, not long ago God na, caused me to prophesy upon a certain business person. Na unajua miaka mingi si mingi sana Mungu aliniamuru nitoe unabii juu ya Zimbabwe. Huyu mfanyabiashara sio Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Sio Zimbabwe. Yes. Yes, this businessman. Huyu mfanyabiashara is not even a Zimbabwean. Sio mtu wa Zimbabwe. And God caused me to declare that the people who are going to assist him the most. Na nikamwambia kwamba watu watakaomsaidia zaidi will be Hindus and Muslims. Watakuwa wa Hindu na Waislamu. Will be Hindus and Muslims. Watakuwa wa Hindu na Waislamu. Hallelujah. Yes is a is a pastor is actually a pastor. Huyo kimsingi ni businessman is a pastor. He's actually a pastor. He's actually a pastor like ourselves like myself and Dr. William Kopo. Ni ni mchungaji kama mimi na mchungaji. He's running a church. Na yeye ana kanisa. So I released this word upon his life. Na nikazungumza hili neno juu yake. I could tell that he partly believed it and he partly didn't believe it. Na unajua sehemu aliamini sasa. That how can Muslims help a Christian pastor? Na Waislamu wanamsaidiaje huyu mfanyabiashara wa Kikristo? Not just a Christian businessman, a Christian businessman who is a pastor. Na si mfanyabiashara tu lakini mfanyabiashara wa Kikristo, mchungaji. Cut a long story short. Kufupisha hadithi. 
kwa sababu Yehuda ni mrefu. This other time this man of God was showing me on his phone last year. Na huyu mtu wa Mungu alikuwa ananionyesha kwenye simu yake mwaka jana. That they've reached a different memorandums of understanding. Wamefanya makubaliano mbalimbali with the, these Muslims na hawa some wasi. from the UAE United Arab Emirates. Wanaotoka kwenye ufalme za Kiarabu and certain indians na wahindi fulani to build certain housing complexes na kujenga nyumba mbalimbali in a certain place i will not mention the katika place katika eneo fulani sasa and they've already started that project na wameanza hii huo mradi i saw videos of him you know in operating those projects na niliona video akisindua next to a high rise building na akisimama kwenye jengo kubwa lililojengwa just imagine a pastor kumbuka yeye ni mtu by muslim amefuata na waislamu to say we want to do business with you nataka kufanya biashara it can happen in the name of jesus 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 it can happen in the Do we have business people here because I'm very spontaneous. Tunawafanyia biashara hapa. Come forward. Kama kuna wafanya biashara njoo hapa mbele, wafanye biashara. Come forward. Njoo hapa mbele, njoo hapa mbele. If you are a business person. Kama wewe ni mfanya biashara njoo hapa mbele. I'm I'm talking about those who have got registered businesses. Mimi naozungumza na hao biashara iliyosajiliwa. Njoo hapa. Because for you to succeed in a country like Tanzania na ili wewe ufanikiwe katika nchi kama Tanzania Tanzania and uh, you know Kenya na nimeangalia Tanzania na Kenya the business sector is dominated by muslims and indians na sehemu ya biashara imeshikwa na waislamu it's a fact it's not an opinion na na it's a fact it's a fact it's a it's it's something which is factual na imeshikili ni halisi haleluya I'm not telling you an opinion or a belief. Siwaambii kitu ninachokiamini. I'm telling you something which you can research and verify. Unaweza ukakifanyia utafiti na ukahakikisha. If you want to make it in business. Na kama unataka kuingia kwenye biashara. At a certain point God has to give you access to the finances that Muslims hold. Na kuna wakati fulani Mungu lazima akupe anani mianya ya kufikia fedha zilizoko katika mikono ya Waislamu na Wahindi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God will do it in the name of Jesus. Na Mungu atafanya katika jina la Yesu. So I want us to hold hands because I will not lay hands on anyone. Nataka mshikane mikono, sita sita. I will make declarations. I will just make declarations. Nitaweka nitatangaza tu tatangaza. And then the rest of us because we need our business people to succeed. Na wengine wetu tunataka wafanyabiashara wafanikiwe. Tafadhali nyio kwa nyuma tusimame. And lift up our hands to God. Tunyanyue mikono yetu kwa Mungu. Father God we declare upon these business people. Baba tuna Mungu tunatangaza juu ya wafanyabiashara. That from now onwards. Kwamba kuanzia leo na kuendelea. The ordinances of heaven. Kwamba sheria za mbinguni will not conspire against them. Hazitaenda kinyume nao. That everything is coming into alignment upon these business people. Na kila kitu kije katika msawa na hao watu. That father you are moving kwamba Mungu unatembea upon their businesses juu ya biashara zao which have been refusing to grow ambazo zimekataa kukua father we link them baba tunawaombea with channels of finances tunawaunganisha na mianya na barabara za fedha whether it's called islamic finance kwamba ni fedha za kiislamu or it's called jewish finance kwamba ni fedha za kiyahudi or it's whatever finance na ni fedha za namna yoyote ile we declare that they are connecting na tunatangaza waunganisho to their destiny helpers kwa, kwa wale wasaidizi wa hapa na Christians and non Christians ambao ni wa Kristo na wasio wa Kristo we release the anointing tunaachilia upako for them to have favor na wapate kibali for them to receive favor kwa wao kupata kibali from muslims and non muslims kwa waislamu na wasio wa Christians and non Christians kwa wa Kristo na wasio wa Kristo people who even don't have a religion na kwa watu hata wasio na dini from the Jews hata kwa wayahudi we declare tunatangaza that the finances kwamba fedha which are controlled by the Jewish community ambazo zinatawaliwa na jamii ya Israel wanaweza kuzifikia hizo fedha that the land na kwamba ile ardhi which is controlled by people from other religions zinazotawaliwa na watu katika imani nyingine the gates and 
said the doors of that land are opening right ah, now in the name of Jesus Christ. Malango, yeah, 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 and they are having si access to this land. Baba Mungu zilofikia. That the buildings kwamba ujenzi which are controlled by people from these other religions. Na ujenzi na nyumba zinazotawaliwa na hao watu. To these saints. Na zinatuliwa na hao. And that is the ulket loans and grants on favorable terms. Na watawapa katika for your purposes kwa sheria Jesus Christ. Na ili wafanikiwe katika jina la Yesu. We remove every barrier. Tunaondoa kila vizuizi. To these saints in the marketplace. Kutuka zinazozuia hao katika maisha. We command the elements in the heavenlies. Tunaamuru vitu to align with your purpose for this sake. Kwa katika mbingu yaendane na watu hao. And we declare that they will testify speedily. Na Mungu ataenda kutoa ushuhuda wa testify speedily in the name of Jesus Christ. Na ataenda kutoa ushuhuda juu ya mambo hayo. Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu mwenye nguvu. It is done in the name of Jesus Christ. Imetumia katika jina la Yesu mwenye nguvu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is done. Imekuwa. It is done. Imekuwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may go back to your seats. Unaweza ukarudi kwenye kitabu. It is done. Imekuwa. We are waiting for testimonies with Dr. William Kopo. Tunasubiri shuhuda kupitia mchungaji William Kopo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. William Kope is waiting for testimonies from Mchungaji this business. Kope people. anasubiri shuhuda zenu. That during this meeting that he convened with the leadership of the Tanzania House of Prayer. Kwamba kupitia mkutano huu uliandaliwa na nyumba ya maombi Tanzania. There, there was a prayer of a prophetic declaration. Na kulikuwa na maombi ya I mean kinabii aliyotangazwa juu yetu. Which was made for the business people. Ambayo yalitolewa kwa wafanyabiashara. That things have started to happen in their lives. Mambo yameanza kutokea kwenye maisha yao. It won't be a question of you running after these people they will look for you. Na sio kwamba wewe utaanza kuwatafuta wao wataanza kukutafuta. They will look for you. Wataanza kukutafuta. There is a certain brother back home. Kuna kaka mmoja kule nyumbani. This brother I met him once. Nilikutana na huyu kaka mara moja. I met him once in our city. Nilikutana naye mara moja kule nyumbani. Then afterwards we, he looked for my phone number and started to talk to me over the phone. Na baada ya hapo alitafuta namba yangu ya simu tukaanza kuongea naye kwa njia So one one day when I was praying alone I saw him with Arabs you know wearing the clothing of Arabs. Na, These si Arabs that were a head covering with with a, a rope on top on top siku moja nilipo nilipokuwa nikiomba nikamwona amekana wa arabu wenye ile kiki kile wamejifunga kile kitambana so, ile so kama yao so i was wondering in the vision as he converted to something else na nikaanza kufikiri kwenye maono kwamba je amebadilishwa imani kwenda kwenye imani nyingine the holy spirit said no he has not changed his faith na Roho Mtakatifu akaniambia hajabadilisha imani yake. He is just wearing that to honor those people. Na alisema amevaa ili kuheshimu mtu hao. What you are watching is a business meeting, it's not a spiritual meeting. Na unachokiona ni mkutano wa kibiashara sio mkutano wa kiroho. So after praying a bit about that vision, the na, Holy Spirit prompted me. Na baada ya kuomba kwa muda juu ya hayo maono, Roho Mtakatifu alinitia moyo to share with him that court was opening a door for him to do business with certain muslims na nikamushirikisha kwamba mungu anafungua mlango wa yeye kufanya arab emirates kufanya biashara na watu wa specific place kule falme za kiarabu by the holy spirit kwa, kwa nikamuonyesha na eneo halisi a few months later siku miezi michache baadaye contacted me alinitafuta ali and said men of god you won't believe what what has taken place na kaniambia mtu wa Mungu huwezi kuamini kilichotokea this past two or so weeks i was not in zimbabwe na hii miezi miwili wiki mbili nilikuwa not at my cost nilikuwa kule warabuni si kwa gharama zangu i was invited to the all expenses paid nilikuitwa kule kwa gharama zote for a business meeting with people whom i do not know na watu huko kwenye kikao cha biashara na watu ambao sikuwa like you related your vision i was the only person from i was first he said it was the only african na kimsingi in that meeting mimi nilikuwa mwafrika pekee kwenye mwafrika pekee kwenye kile kitu all of them were arabs wengine wote walikuwa warabu he was just seated there and he couldn't even speak arabic na alikuwa amekaa pale hakuweza hata kuongea kiarabu so they would speak arabic and then they would be translate someone would be translating to him for to 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 english na kuna mtu alikuwa anamtafsiria wataongea kiarabu ili una kuna mtu alikuwa anamtafsiria kiingereza na kufupisha hadithi aliwe and they appointed him to be their agent 
na waliingia kwenye mkataba na wakamchagua kuwa wakala wao to transactions to do with oil na kwa ajili ya biashara ya mafuta in certain parts of africa katika maeneo mbalimbali ya africa so his business which was making losses na biashara yake ilikuwa inaleta hasara. It just transformed overnight. Na ilibadilika kwa usiku mmoja. Because God used the the prophetic to cause an alignment in na, his life. Na sababu Mungu alitumia unabii kusababisha mbingu kuwa sawa sawa na kukaa so kwenye upande wake. So it appears if you are wasting your time in this intercession meeting. Na unaweza kaona kama unapoteza muda wako katika mkutano wa maombi. But like I said, lakini kama nilivyosema. This is a parliamentary session. Na nimekuambia hili ni bunge kikao cha bunge we are making a lot of amendments tunafanya mabadiliko ya sheria nyingi in the course and the direction of your life ambavyo yatabadilisha yata mwelekeo wa maisha a lot of things which were wrong in your life mambo mengi yalikuwa mabaya kwenye maisha yako they are being amended by the holy spirit yanabadilishwa na kurekebishwa na roho mtakatifu everything which was out of alignment kila kilichokuwa nje ya mpangilio it is struck off in the name of jesus christ viondoke katika jina la yesu like in parliament they strike off certain sections na kama kwenye bunge wanavyozika align them to circumstances and situations wanaviunganisha na mazingira is being aligned in your life right Vito now vitu vinaunganishwa kwenye maisha yako sasa things are aligning in your life right now vitu vinaunganishwa kwenye maisha yako sasa if your business was small na kama biashara yako ilikuwa ndogo let me show you in the book of job ngoja nikuonyeshe katika kitabu cha ayub what will happen to you and your business nini kitakachotokea kwako na kwa biashara yako let us go to job chapter 8 twende kwenye ayub mlango wa 8 oh thank you holy spirit asante roho mtakatifu oh we thank you holy spirit tunakushukuru roho mtakatifu oh we thank you lord tunakushukuru bwana job chapter 8 ayub mlango wa 8 Job chapter 8 Ayub mlango wa 8 verse 7 Mstari wa 7 Though your beginning was small yet your latter end would increase abundance Tena ujapo huo mwanzo wako ulikuwa ni mdogo lakini mwisho wako utaongezeka sana Though your beginning was small Japo mwanzo wako huo ulikuwa mdogo yet your latter end would increase abundance Lakini mwisho wako utaongezeka sana The Holy Spirit is saying in as much as you are in this meeting. Na Roho Mtakatifu anazungumza kwa jinsi ulivyo hapa kwenye umbo. Though your beginning was small. Haijalishi mwanzo wako ulikuwa mdogo. Your latter end will increase abundantly. Mwisho wako utakuwa mkubwa sana. Because there is an alignment in the heavenly. Kwa sababu kuna muunganiko na mbingu. I have, I'm not even preaching my own sermon I'm just writing on the points that na, you are sharing. Na sijaanza kuhubiri mahubiri yangu na naandika tu yale maneno ambayo tumeshirikiana. Hallelujah because Hallelujah. when the Holy Spirit speaks he testifies to others in the audience. Na kwa sababu Roho Mtakatifu akisema anathibitisha. When he was sharing the Holy Spirit was testifying. Na wakati ulipokuwa ukishirikisha Roho Mtakatifu wakati anazungumza Roho Mtakatifu alikuwa anathibitisha. Even though I don't understand the, you know Swahili but na, I can pick one or two things. Na hata kama sikuwa najua Kiswahili nilidaka kimoja au viwili. I think I have to learn Swahili. How many people believe I have na, to learn Swahili? Na najua nahitaji kujifunza Kiswahili. Wangapi wana? I'm going to learn Swahili. Na nahitaji kujifunza Kiswahili. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think it will make my life easier in na, East Africa. Na ninaamini itasababisha maisha yangu ya rais hapa. Kwa kwa mwalimu he is going to teach me. Na hapa kuna mwalimu atanifundisha. Atanifundisha uh, kupitia we'll what we can work Account. Na was kwa... teaching very well yesterday. I said if I could understand this language. Na alinifundisha jana nikamwambia ningeelewa yeah, vizuri lugha. Next time I come here I will be able to greet and to hold a small conversation. Na nikija hapa wakati mwingine. By mgini, the special grace of God. Nitasalimia na kuwa na mawasiliano kidogo kwa neema ya Mungu. So what I'm sharing is just to encourage your faith. I'm not even sharing na, part of my message for na, today. Na nachofanya ninakushirikisha ili kukutia moyo. Sijaanza hata kuhubiri hubiri lako sin why he was sharing so passionate na unajua kwa nini alipokuwa anazungumza kwa msukumo wa ndani it's because of what god is doing in the heaven kwa sababu ya kile mungu anachofanya kwenye mbingu for tanzania kwa ajili ya tanzania for christians in tanzania kwa ajili ya wakristo tanzania there is an alignment which is taking place kuna mpangilio unafanyika you see what happened when president makufuli was president Unaona kile kitu ambacho How many things happened Mambo yalivyotokea wakati Magufuli akiwa rais Mambo mangapi yalitokea 
Just imagine if God raises Mark Fulis in the body of Christ. Na unafikiri nini People kama bulldozers like Mungu akiinua Mark Fulis kwenye mwili wa Kristo, wa Kristo wa watumishi wa Mungu wenye roho yake. Na bishops wa Mark Fulis. Na maaskofu na wachungaji wa Mark Fulis all the way to Zimbabwe. Mtabuldoza kila mpaka all Zimbabwe. the way to Kenya. Mtaenda mpaka Kenya. You'll be bulldozing all the way to Ethiopia. Mtaenda mpaka Ethiopia. You'll be bulldozing all the way to Uganda. Mtaenda mpaka Uganda. Tossing all the way to Burundi. Taenda mpaka Burundi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know yesterday when I was standing over there when I when the Holy Spirit started to push me. Na unajua jana nilipokuwa pale nimesimama Rome takatifu can contain my people. Do you know what I was seeing in the spirit? Na nilipokuwa nasema hatuna viwanja vya mpira vinavyoweza kupokea hao watu. I was seeing nilikuwa naona nini? People were doing a meeting a crusade in a big stadium Nili, in this country. Nilikuwa naona watu wanafanya mkutano mkubwa kwenye uwanja wa mpira mkubwa. The people who were outside the stadium there were 10 times the people who were inside the stadium. Watu waliokuwa nje ya ule uwanja walikuwa mara kumi ya wale walio ndani ya uwanja. So there was PA system all over the place. Na kulikuwa na vipasa sauti kila eneo. And flat lights all over the place. Na kulikuwa na taa kila eneo. So, so I was speaking something which I was seeing in the vision. Na nilikuwa nazungumza kitu ambacho nimekiona kwenye say, because I was seeing people coming like you know as as a river which is flowing when, when there is a flood when there is a lot of water. Nilikuwa naona watu wanakuja kama mafuriko watu when I'm speaking that I pe, I'm beginning to feel the anointing. Na, I na, was na, seeing people coming from all directions. Ninavozungumza naona upako. Ninaona watu wanakuja kutoka kila upande. And the people who organized the crusades na, they were saying we, we were not prepared for na, this. Na watu walioandaa ule mkutano wanasema hatuko tukao. How are these people coming to our crusade like na, this? Na watu hao wanakujaje kwenye mkutano wetu kama haya? I could tell that these people were from different communities. Na ninakwambia hao watu walikuwa From the way they are clothing. From the way I was seeing they are clothing. Na nilivyoona wale If I was in Zimbabwe I was going to speak the message the way I saw it. Ningekuwa kule Zimbabwe ningesema I would speak it the way I saw it. Ningesema jinsi nilivyoona. But here because of sensitivities I may not mention na, everything which I saw in the vision. Na hapa kwa sababu ya umakini siwezi kusema kila kitu. They were wearing hats others they were wearing other things. Na wengine walikuwa na na siwezi kuelezea and they were coming in their numbers walikuwa nakuja in their numbers walikuwa nakuja kwa na, ma, ma, kwa idadi kubwa wengi sana they were coming in their numbers walikuwa nakuja kwa wingi wao a situation where the preacher all of a sudden realizes the sermon is not enough na mpaka yule mhubiri akatambua kwamba because they were not prepared for the harvest that God is bringing na into the house kwamba ule yale mahubiri yake hayatoshi kwa sababu hakujiandaa kwa mavuno ambayo Bwana ameyaleta i am telling you by the spirit of god ninawaambia katika roho mtakatifu wa Mungu that the holy spirit is saying the harvest is ready na roho anasema mavuno ni tayari He is saying the harvest is ready. Anasema mavuno ni tayari. And the Holy Spirit is asking you a question. Na Roho Mtakatifu anakuuliza swali. Are you ready to harvest? Je, uko tayari kuvuna? Are you ready to harvest? Je, uko tayari kuvuna? Are you ready to harvest? Je, uko tayari kuvuna? I don't know him but God is going to use you my brother. Sikujui lakini Mungu ataenda kukutumia ndugu yangu. He's going to use you. Mungu ataenda kukutumia. The Asamu will try to oppose you. Kuna watakao jaribu kukuzuhi kukutumia. But God is going to use you. Mungu ataenda kukutumia. He will not only use you in your country, he will use you in other countries as well. Atakutumia si katika nchi yako tu hata katika nchi nyingine. I see God open doors for you. Naona Mungu akifungua milango kwako. Even in other countries. Hata katika nchi nyingine. He will use you to perform miracles. Atakutumia kufanya miujiza. He will use you to deliver those who are captive. Na atakutumia kuwafungua waliofungwa. He will use you in the prophetic. Atakutumia katika unabii. When you are preaching miracles will take place. Wakati utakapokuwa ukihubiri miujiza itakuwa people will be testifying. Kabla ya wewe utaombi wewe utatoshi the glory of God. Utatembea katika utukufu wa Mungu. And those whom God will cause to cooperate with your ministry. Na wale ambao Mungu atawasababisha kushirikiana na huduma God is going to release a mighty blessing upon their lives. Mungu ataachilia baraka kubwa juu ya maisha yao. 
God will send your destiny helpers speaking. Mungu atawaleta watu wasaidizi wa kimhatimu from outside this country. Hata nje ya nchi. He saying I'm raising more outside this country. Na anasema nitainua wengi kutoka nje. Who assist you to fulfill your his will and your mandate. Atawasaidi ili uweze kutimiza His mandate upon your life. Ile kusudi lake juu ya maisha. Can you see? Katika maisha haya Nikasema He saying are you ready for the harvest? Analiza mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Analiza mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anasema mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anasema mko yuko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anauliza mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anauliza mko tayari kwa mavuno. Jesus mighty name. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Jesus my tin. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anauliza mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Je uko tayari kwa mavuno? He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anauliza mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anasema mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anauliza mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anauliza mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anauliza mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anauliza mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anauliza mko tayari kwa mavuno. He saying are you ready for the harvest? Anauliza mko tayari kwa mavuno. There is a massive outpouring. Na kuna nguvu mwagiko mkubwa wa roho. There is a massive outpouring. Kuna mwagiko mkubwa wa wa roho from the coast kutoka pwani. From the coast of Tanzania. Kutoka pwani ya Tanzania to Mount Kilimanjaro. Paka mlima Kilimanjaro. To Mount Kilimanjaro. Paka mlima Kilimanjaro. Up to the border with Kenya. Paka kwenye paka na Kenya. There is a massive move of the spirit of God. Kuna mtembeo mkubwa wa roho wa Mungu. Which won't be restricted to a church. Ambao hautawekewa mpaka na kanisa. Which won't be restricted to a church. Hautawekewa mpaka na kanisa. What is activating intercessors? Mungu yuko makini katika He's activating intercessors. Na yuko anatembea na waombaji. Who will pray for the servants of God? Watakaoomba kwa watumishi wa Mungu. To broaden their vision. Kupanua maono yao. To broaden their vision. Kupanua maono yao. And receive the mind of God. Na wapokee uwepo wa Mungu. To win the lost in their thousands. Kupokea kupokea waliopata kwa maelfu. To win the lost in their millions. Kuwapata maelfu waliopokea. He's saying I'm bringing in the harvest. Ninaleta mavuno ndani. He's saying I am bringing in the harvest. Anasema naleta ndani mavuno. He's saying I'm bringing in the harvest. Anasema naleta ndani mavuno. He's saying I'm bringing in the harvest. Anasema naleta ndani mavuno. You know in the book of Revelation men of God. Unajua katika kitabu cha ufunuo mtu wa Mungu. Speaks of an angel that was preaching the everlasting gospel in mid heaven. Anasema kuna malaika aliyekuwa anahubiri injili ya milele kule mbinguni. There is a scripture like that. Kuna huo mstari. When angel appeared. Na malaika alipotokea. Proclaiming the everlasting gospel. Akihubiri injili ya milele in heaven. Kule mbinguni. But we know angels don't preach the gospel. Na tunajua malaika hawahubiri injili. It's us who preach the gospel. Ni sisi tunaohubiri injili. So the 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 everlasting gospel. Na ile injili ya milele. Ticket by that special angel. Iliyotamkwa na yule malaika. Has to align with the gospel that we are preaching. Na lazima ilingane iendane na injili tunayohubiri. It has to align with the gospel. Ita lazima iendane na injili. Which God is releasing through that angel, the everlasting. Na ambayo Mungu anaiachilia kupitia yule malaika injili. And right now God is bringing his servants into alignment. Na sasa Mungu anawaleta watumishi wake kuendana na the message, message which God is releasing in the heavens. Na ule ujumbe ambao Mungu anawaachilia mbinguni. Denominations don't matter. Na madhehebu hayajalishi. They don't matter. Haijalishi. Denominations don't matter. Mama the hebu haijalishi. Because the Holy Spirit is moving. Kwa sababu Roho Mtakatifu anatembea. Churches they will cooperate. I'm not saying churches will become one church. Na makanisa yatashirikiana. There will still be different churches. Kutakuwa na madhehebu tofauti. But they will cooperate. Lakini yatashirikiana. Because we are all expanding one kingdom. Kwa sababu tunapanua ufalme mmoja. Which is the kingdom of God. Ambao ni ufalme wa Mungu. 
You know it's like when you look at Dodoma it doesn't just have one suburb. Na kama Dodoma haina mtaa mmoja. It has got different regions within itself. Kuna mitaa mbalimbali ndani yake. Different suburbs. Na kuna mitaa mbalimbali. Or different townships. Na mi, 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 The fact that a suburb has got its own name. Na haijalishi kitongoji kina jina lake mwenyewe. It doesn't mean that it's different from Dodoma. Haimaanishi ni tofauti na Dodoma. It's just like our churches. Na ni kama makanisa yetu. They've got different names. Yana majina tofauti. And different orientations. Na ma, na ma, misingi tofauti. But we all contribute to the advancement of the kingdom of Lakini God. Lakini wote tunahusika katika kuendeleza ufalme wa Mungu. Because in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Katika Mathayo mlango wa 6:33 The Bible says but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Biblia nasema utafuteni kwanza ufalme wa Mungu na haki yake. And then all these other things shall be added unto you. Na haya mengine yote mtazidishiwa. Right now God is bringing all churches in Tanzania. Na sasa Mungu analeta makanisa yote kwa alignment with his will. Kwenye mwelekeo mmoja na mapenzi yake into alignment with this week kwenye mwelekeo mmoja na mapenzi yake we decree as intercessors tunatangaza kama waombaji that there is no church which will be left behind kwamba hakutakuwa na kanisa litakaloa reno methodist or indigenous kama african independent churches every church will align in the name of jesus kila kanisa lazima ijitange and all churches will serve one purpose na kila kanisa litafikia hizi ni lost for jesus christ ni kuwavuta hao watu kwa yesu and to lead the lost to a life saving knowledge of jesus christ na kuleta hao watu kwenye uoko so we the lost for yesu jesus christ say say to the son of man came na Yesu alisema mwana wa Mungu alikuja he came to save that which is lost mwana wa Adamu alikuja kuokoa kile kilichopotea but to save that which is lost kuhudumiwa bali kuokoa kile kilichopotea kanisa Tanzania they are aligning with that mandate of Jesus Christ wanaingia kwenye hilo kusudi aligning with that mandate of Jesus Christ kuingia kwenye mpango Tanzania katika mpango mmoja kama makanisa Jesus are aligning with that will of Jesus Christ au waombaji wanaunganika kwa kwenye Roman Catholic Church or Anglican Church Methodist Church or Lutheran Church or Moravian Church or Mennonite Church wanaelewa kanisa gani They are all aligning with the will of Jesus Christ. With the mandate of Jesus Christ. Kwenye mapenzi ya Mungu. Because souls are coming. Kwa sababu roho zinakuja. They are not coming for us to have big names. Hawaji ili sisi tuwe majina makubwa. They are coming because it's, a, it's the season of harvest. Wanakuja kwa sababu ni majira ya mavuno. The master, the spirit of the master is saying this is the season of harvest. Roho wa Bwana anasema huu ni wakati. Haya ni majira wa mavuno. I believe the atmosphere allows me there, there is something which God showed me for the man of God. Na na na, na ninaamini mazingira na Mungu. I mean the natural. Na kuna jambo lilinishtua mtu wa Mungu. Yes, but I saw him uh, move with the people who are like missionaries. Ni, ni memuona, black and white missionaries. Nimekuona ukitembea na watu wa, wa missionaries weupe na wao. Disadvantaged communities. Katika watu wa maeneo yaliyo na shida. They were preaching the gospel they were preaching the gospel walikuwa wanahubiri injili but also ministering to the needs of the people in disadvantaged communities na kuwasaidia watu wenye uhitaji katika jamii ya watu holes and building classrooms na mkijenga madarasa mkijenga na vitabu na mkitoa vitabu assisting women who are and a privilege na kuwasaidia wa mama wa shida na walio wajane na walio certain projects Kusa, kuanzisha like a, nutritional miradi gardens na kuanzisha and miradi. other self help projects na miradi ya kujitegemea and god was saying i am releasing na mungu akasema ninaachilia testing helpers wa, wasaidizi wa kihati to you kwako and the leadership in your ministry na uongozi katika huduma yako for you to reach out to communities which are underserved in terms of the gospel na kuwafikia watu ambao hawajafikiwa na because those communities are in serious need kwa sababu hizo jamii ziko katika uhitaji the spirit of god was saying i'm sending you with resources na 
roho Mungu anasema na kutuma na kutaja. I am connecting you to people who have got the resources. Na ninawape na kuwa na wanafunzi schools. Na utaanza kujenga shule. As you go there you will build clinics. Utajenga clinics. As you go there you will build whatever is needed in the community. Na mkifika pale utajenga kile cha ikazi. What you are saying I'm giving him a, co- a constructing and a building anointing. Ninakuachilia upako wa ujenzi. An anointing to open up and cause development to exist in remote places na ufa ili kwenda kufungua ufalme wa Mungu kuishi katika maeneo yale to break the curse of unemployment kuvunja laana ya kutokuajiriwa because i saw them praying as leaders na nimewaona mkiomba in kama there is chronic unemployment kwenye eneo ambalo halima ajira unemployed wa, and God ambalo... was causing even the government to follow in their na, footsteps nimewaona hata to begin mungu... to open up certain places for serikali ikienda kuwafua tena God was saying i am giving him Biblia Mungu anasema which transcends being merely a pastor. Na nina kwa Mungu anachilia upoko na kufanya kwa mchezaji you to be catalyst for change in your country. Mungu anasababisha uwe msababishi wa mabadiliko. Catalyst for change even in other countries. Anasababishi mabadiliko kwenye hata nchi nyingine. You won't be doing a lot of charismatic things. How but when it goes to different communities. Hautafanya mambo ya charismatic sana lakini utakapoenda kwenye hizo jamii the communities will be renewed na hizo jamii zitaanza kuwa communities will be healed hizo jamii zitaanza kuwa communities will be restored hizo jamii zitarejeshwa where which craft has been ruling it will be broken as you pray in those days mahali ambapo uchawi umekuwa ukitawala utavunjika katika mtakapoomba katika, katika, katika jina la Yesu haleluya haleluya i feel the atmosphere Nina that the heavens are open mbingu zimefunguka I have not finished my message but the Holy Spirit is saying whilst you are still standing na sijamaliza ujumbe wangu roho mtakatifu anasema mkio bado mmesimama the present worship team will lead us in worship na, those who feel like praying just pray the holy spirit is moving na vi, nani waimbaji waimbe wala unasikia kwa maana ya finished my message in fact i've not even started my sermon na sijaanza hata ujumbe wangu roho mtakatifu anasema tuendelee oh, kusimama waimbaji tuendelee kuimba na wewe unasikia kuomba endelea kuomba so na karasaya the holy spirit is moving roho mtakatifu anatembea The Holy Spirit is moving. Roho mtakatifu anatembea. Mungu wangu 
Before I share my brief message, which I'm going to finish later in the afternoon, connect with the Holy Spirit. Right now, people, there are certain people who are receiving the unction to connect accurately with the Holy Spirit. Anything which had hindered you from connecting with the Holy Spirit it is removed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is moving. He 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 is moving. Anatembea. 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 I wanted to start the sermon. The Holy Spirit told me, I am moving. Na, nilita, Wait a bit, I am moving. Nilita kwanza maubiri. Roo mtakatifu kanembea subiri. Nina tembea. Subiri kidogo. Nina tembea. When Nina tembea. you are co connect with the Spirit of God. Jiunganishe na roo abwana. Jiunganishe na roo abwana. You don't need any person to touch you physically. Uitaji mtu yoyote ya kuguse kimwili. You don't need any person to touch you physically. He is moving. He is moving. And he is removing everything which has limited you. Anything which has limited your spiritual life. Kila kilichokuwa kinazuia maisha yako ya kiroho. Anything which has limited your family. Kila kilichokuwa kizuia maisha yako ya kiroho. He is releasing you right now. Anachilia nguvu zake. He is releasing you right now. Anakuweka huru sasa. He is releasing us right now. Anatuweka huru sasa. He is releasing us right now. Anatuweka huru sasa. He is releasing us right now. Anatueka uru sasa. He is releasing us right now. Anatueka uru sasa. He is releasing us right now. Anatueka uru sasa. Oh, Satramai. Zapre ndika suna. Osta ndika suma. Ndika suna. 
He is moving. Anatembea. He is moving. Anatembea. He is moving. Anatembea. He is moving. Anatembea. He is empowering us to win the harvest. Anatutia nguvu kukusanya mavuno. He is empowering us to align with his will. Anatutia nguvu kujipanga kwenye mpangilio wake. Sote maske dosi. Toma ni kazona. Sete amika tukoni. Reka utsuna karasie. Leprandoske tima. Sate moske dan. Repe sante maske tima. Zombra ndani. Zombra ndika tukoni. The anointing is intensifying. Na upako na ongezeka. The anointing is intensifying. 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 He is empowering us to win the lost. 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 The anointing is intensifying. He is empowering us to destroy altars of witchcraft. The anointing is intensifying. He is empowering us to destroy altars. Of witchcraft. Anatutia He's giving us power to destroy altars of witchcraft. Anatutia nguvu kuvunja madhabahu za kichawi. The anointing is intensifying. Upako unaongezeka. He's empowering us to destroy altars of witchcraft. Anatutia nguvu kuvunja madhabahu za kichawi. Let us lift up our hands once more. Tuinue tena mikono yetu mara moja. Father we receive Baba tunapokea We receive 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 the anointing upako We receive the anointing tunapokea upako to do great exploits kufanya kukama kupokea mavuno makubwa We receive the anointing tunapokea upako to to break through limits kuvuka kuvuka mipaka tuliyoweka tunapokea upako to break through limits kuvuka kuvuka mipaka tuliyowekewa to break through limits kuvuka mipaka tuliyowekewa we receive the anointing tunapokea upako to break through limits kuvunja ile mipaka tuliyowekewa we receive the anointing tunapokea upako to break through limits kuvuka kupata upenyo we receive the anointing tunapokea upako to break through limits kuvuka mipaka tuliyowekewa limits which have existed for hundreds of years mipaka iliyowekwa miaka we break through limits Mia. tunavuka mipaka we break through limits tunavuka mipaka we break through limits tunavuka mipaka in the mighty name 
name of Jesus Christ. We break through limits. Tunavuka mipaka. We break through limits. Tunavuka lia mipaka. As intercessors who are breaking limits. Na waombaji wanavuka mipaka. As intercessors who are breaking through limits. Na kama waombaji tunavuka As intercessors who are breaking through limits. Kama waombaji tunavuka hiyo mipaka. As intercessors who are breaking through limits. Kama waombaji tunavuka hiyo mipaka. As intercessors who are breaking through limits. Kama waombaji tunavuka hiyo mipaka. As intercessors who are breaking through limits. Kama waombaji tunavuka hiyo mipaka. As intercessors who are breaking through limits. Kama waombaji tunavuka hiyo mipaka. As intercessors who are breaking limits. Na kama waombaji tunavunja hiyo mipaka tunavuka. As intercessors who are breaking through limits. Kama waombaji tunavuka hiyo mipaka. Oh Nastro Mande Nastro Kimasuna Kandro Meske Diakomo No kuyinze kenesaya Oh Simbrando Oske Timakine Sumbre Nika Utsutsuna Nika Ushimanda Gune Soto We thank you Lord Tunakushukuru Bwana We thank you Holy Spirit Tunakushukuru Ram Takatifu We thank you Lord. Tunakushukuru Bwana. Hallelujah. 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 I'm Hall trying to restrain myself. The Holy Spirit says I must release a very brief word to him. Nataka kuachilia neno kwa kifupi kwa ajili yako. The Holy Spirit is saying the challenges that you have been encountering. Na Roho Mtakatifu anasema zile changamoto ulichokuwa ukikutana of, of, of the Almighty God I think of the past. Katika utumishi wako kwa Mungu katika nyakati The resistance that you have been encountering spiritually. Ule upinzani ulikuwa ukikutana nao is a thing of the past. Ni mambo ya kale. The Spirit of God is saying Today I'm giving you a new voice. Na Roho Mtakatifu anasema leo nakupa sauti mpya. You will speak with your natural voice. Utazungumza kwa sauti yako ya kawaida. And I will cause your voice to sound like the sofa. Na nitasababisha sauti yako iwe kama tarumbeta, kama pembe. It will sound like a sofa. Iwe kama pembe. It will sound like the horn when they are blowing it. Na itakuwa kama horn inapofulizwa. The Holy Spirit is saying you will transcend your region. Na Roho Mtakatifu anasema utavuka kwenye maeneo yako. He is saying I am raising you to be a prophetic voice in your nation. Ninakuinua kuwa sauti ya kinabii katika taifa lako. He is saying I am raising you to be a prophetic voice in your nation. Nimekuinua kuwa sauti ya kinabii katika taifa lako. He is saying I'm going to send you to the places where there is thick darkness. Na ninakutuma nitakutuma katika maeneo ambayo kuna giza nene and you will be able to shine as a shining light na utaweza kushkungaa kama nuru inayongaa in places which have been dominated by strongholds of witchcraft na katika maeneo ambayo yamekuwa yakishikiliwa na ngome ya kichawi and at all the religions na dini nyingine you will go there with freedom na utaenda pale kwa uhuru for my people na kwa watu wangu And whatever you decree under my anointing na kile chochote utakachokitangaza katika uongo kitakuja kutimia speedily kwa haraka sometimes more speedily kwa wakati mwingine kwa haraka sana than whatever you are able to imagine or think ah kulika jinsi unavyowaza na kufikiri he is saying i am i am mobilizing new people to be your friends na nina nina ninawakusanya watu wapya kuwa marafiki zako you do not know watu ambao hukuwajua People who don't speak Swahili and people who don't speak English. Watu ambao wazungumzi Kiswahili wala Kiingereza. Is their original language. Kama lugha yao ya asili. He is saying even as you struggle to connect because of the barrier of language. Na wakati mwingine mnaweza kupata connecting you to your destiny helper. Changamoto ya lugha lakini nitawafanya kuwa wasaidizi wako wa hatima yako. You know why I'm saying that I'm seeing him visit the DRC at a certain point. Ninakuona katika DRC kule Konga katika wakati fulani. Kati ukihubiri injili ya Kristo. Hallelujah. 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 It's a new season of open doors. Ni majira mapya ya milango iliyofunguliwa. It's a new season of open doors. Ni majira mapya ya milango iliyofunguliwa. It's a new season of open doors. Ni majira mapya ya milango iliyofunguliwa. It's a new season. Ni majira mapya. It's a new season of open doors. Ni majira mapya ya milango iliyofunguliwa. It's a new season of open doors. Ni majira mapya ya milango iliyofunguliwa. 
Men of God, there is a move that God is bringing na to, your, to your church organization denomination. Kuna mtembeo wa Mungu ambao unaoleta kwenye kanisa lako na dhehebu lako. It will especially affect fairly young people 35 years and below. Na itagusa sana vijana miaka 35 kushuka chini. The way the Holy Spirit will be moving, it will be violent. Na namna Roma takatifu atakapotembea itakuwa so, kama fujo. Some, some people are far much older than that age group. Watu wakubwa wa umri mkubwa kuliko huo they might begin to think that it is not God. So I saw a charismatic, a very serious charismatic move of God within your denomination. I saw young people begin to pray more than Pentecostals and people in other so-called highly charismatic Na churches wata, are able to pray. Wataomba, I saw wataomba, young kuliko, people being moved by the Holy Spirit to do na. spontaneous all-night prayers. Ya spontaneous mikeshe. chain prayers. Ya I saw so God begin to use these young people to, to mba, win many people who are lost. Especially those who are young. Kus, kwa, kwa tumia wa vijana kuoko, kutafuta watu waliopotea. And vijana. God was saying Mungu anasema, in as much as you are in this meeting na ka, kwa diri ulivokuwa kwenye is releasing is releasing an Elijah anointing na anachia so that the hearts of the fathers are aligned with the hearts of the sons and the daughters so that the hearts of the children wa kike na wa kike na the hearts of the children are aligned with the hearts of the fathers and the mothers. Because when there is misalignment, the enemy uses that to create division. So I wanted to restrain the word and speak it private. But the Holy Spirit said, I am going to do my work publicly. Why would you declare it private? Even as I was already started, in certain of your church, it will increase. There are some who are older, even older than you. Kuna who have wa become say, very, very charismatic. Wa, wa, wa na upako These hey. are the final moves of God. Hini wa mwisho wa mungu. Which will cause people from other religions to be attracted to na, the God of Christ. Watu when they see wage. the supernatural in manifestation. God will use you. Mungu atakutumia wewe. Dynamically through teachings. Katika kipekee na hasa kwenye mafundisho. Atakupa deeper understanding of the Holy Spirit. Atakupa uelewa mkubwa wa Roma kwa those who will stumble when they see these moves of God. Na wale ambao watakwama watakapona what God is doing. Kuelewa kile ambacho Mungu anafanya. Katika jina la Yesu. Hallelujah. 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 It's an open heaven. Ni mbingu zilizo wazi. 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 There are two denominations that are going to be seriously touched by God. Na Very old denominations. Mawili, mawili I don't know mawili. how much presence they have here. But the Holy wapu. Spirit is telling me to speak this. Na Rome, I could be nyanese. preaching my sermon. It's it's certain strands of the Methodist church. I don't know what it is called here. Kuna, the church which was started by John Wesley. The church which was started by John Wesley. Na, Whoever na belongs John, to that John church, Wesley, God is going Methodist. to begin to move in a mighty way. Na li, Methodist, ambalo kwa nguvu kubwa. <laughs> And also the Luther and the church which was started by Martin Luther. God will begin to move in a mighty way. I saw a charismatic move of God within the Lutheran church. A serious move of the Almighty God within the Lutheran denomination. God will move. He will move. He will move. Mungu I saw prayer 
prayer groups of women I saw prayer groups of men I saw prayer groups of youth within the Lutheran and certain strands of the Methodist people I saw the spirit of God move them to do early morning prayers which they were calling morning glory and even some people from the mainstream Pentecostal churches they were joining that move God is not a respecter of persons God is not a respecter of persons He is saying I am reviving the old 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 He is saying I am making that which is old new He is saying I am making that which is old he is saying I am renewing that which is old He is saying I am renewing that which is old He is saying I am bringing renewal in Tanzania He is saying I am renewing the old He is saying I am renewing the old He is saying I am renewing the old He's saying I'm going to cause those who think they are old to run like young men and women. He's saying I'm going to cause those who think they are old to run like young men and women. He's saying in as much as you have waited upon me, I'm renewing your strength. He's saying even if you are grey headed, I'm causing you to be energized by my spirit he is saying you will run and not be weary he is saying you will run and not be weary he is saying you will run and not be weary he is saying you won't get tired he is saying you won't get tired he is saying I am renewing your physical bodies he is saying by the anointing I am renewing your physical bodies he is saying I am renewing your physical bodies so that you may run with my will so that you may run with my purpose he is saying I am healing and restoring you he is saying I am healing and restoring you he is saying I am healing and restoring you Oh Satamaya Nakateske Dima Indoneske Dima Kine Sombre Nikastelele Kibasuna Zanda Andanda Zanda Kumenzia We thank you Lord Tunakushukuru Buwana We thank you Holy Spirit Tunakushukuru Rom Takatifu Oh Shima Kosa We thank you Lord We thank you Holy Spirit Oh mama zote We thank you Lord Let us lift up our hands The heavens are open 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 The heavens are open. I'm trying to restrain myself not to prophesy because I'm supposed to be preaching a sermon but the way the Holy Spirit the way the Holy Spirit is moving I find myself saying certain things to certain people in spite of myself God is releasing mentals. You know mentals. Mungu anaachilia mavazi. Unajua vazi? Like what happened when Elijah was taken by the whirlwind. Na kama vile Elia alivyochukuliwa 
I want you to close your eyes. But before you close your eyes, I want you to release a message upon this sister. I don't know whether I don't know whether you are recording music. Just to hold my hand. God wants you to record to record. Mungu anataka urekord to release music uachilie mziki it will be a blessing utakuwa baraka to people in many nations kwenye watu wa mataifa mengi it will prophesy into people's lives itatoa unabii kwenye maisha ya watu god will use it to open doors for you na mungu atatumia kufungua milango you will kwa use it to open doors for you mungu ataitumia kufungua milango wazi kwa ajili yako God is saying I am availing a studio studios for you to record. Mungu anasema nafungua milango ya studio kwa ajili yako tu rekodi. For you to record. Kwa ajili yako tu rekodi. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Katika jina la Kristo Yesu. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. And if in as you record. Na utakapoendelea ku rekodi. You won't be singing using just your natural talent. Hauta uimba kwa vipawa vyako tu. The prophetic will be evident in your music. Na nyimbo zako zitakuwa za kinabii. You will prophesy into people's lives. Utatoa unabii kwenye maisha ya watu. And things will move. People with cancers they will be healed when they listen to your music. Utatokea watu wenye saratani watapona. People who have been experiencing chaos in their lives they will be restored. Na watu waliokuwa na mvuruko watakaposikia muziki wako watakapo Nyimbo zako zitawaleta watu kwenye uwepo wa Mungu. In Jesus mighty name. Katika jina la Yesu lenye nguvu. In Jesus mighty name. Katika jina la Yesu lenye nguvu. Oh, seprandika sana. It's an open heaven. Ni mbingu zilizo wazi. Let us close our eyes. Tufunge macho yetu, tufunge macho yetu. God is releasing mantles. Mungu anaachilia mavazi. Mantles, mavazi. Mantles, mavazi. Mantles, mavazi. I don't know what you do for a living. Siju unafanya nini kwa kuishi? I don't know what to do for a living. Si juu nafanya nini kwa kuishi. But kuish. I saw God give you grace. Naona Mungu akikupa neema to establish a very powerful consultancy company. No, okay, anzisha. I saw you work as a consultant. In addition to doing the work of God. Zaidi ya kufanya ile kazi ya Mungu. The spirit of God was saying I've given you wisdom. Mungu roho wa Mungu anasema niukupa hekima. For you to speak solutions. Kutoa wewe kuzungumza suluhisho. To organizations even non-Christian organizations and companies. Kwenye makampuni hata yasiyo ya Kikristo. You are saying I'm opening doors for you. Nasema nafungua milango kwako. In East Africa. Katika Afrika Mashariki. In West Africa. Na kule Afrika Southern Africa. Na Afrika Kusini in central africa na katika afrika kakati in north africa na afrika in ya kaskazini in the middle east na katika mashariki ya america na kule marekani i saw him prosper in consultants ninaona ukifanikiwa katika ushauri i saw him prosper in consultants ninakuona ukifanikiwa katika ushauri i saw him regarded as an expert na kuona kama ukiwa kama mtaalamu the spirit of god was saying i'm giving him wisdom na roho wa mungu anasema nakupa hekima like the wisdom that i gave to daniel na kama ile hekima niliyopa na wewe to, to come up with solutions kwa wewe kuja na solution very simple heavenly solutions masuluhisho la mambo to problems that affect organizations suluhisho la matatizo yaliyoshikana na whatever is taking place in an organization ukiangalia yale yanayotendeka you will be able to suggest solutions utakuwa na uwezo wa kuleta any books kabla kusoma kitabu utakuja him as an anointing utakuja masuluhisho ya upako him supernatural utakuja kwa njia upako msuluhisho he will be a solution even to people who are muslims who are business people na utakuwa suluhisho hata kwa waislamu walio kwenye biashara don't worship anything who are business people kwa wafanyaji biashara hata ambao hawaabudu chochote when he reads he will more than understand than those who wrote whatever books he will be written ukisoma utaelewa zaidi ya waandishi walioandika and he will write many books na utaandika vitabu vingi he will write 
write many modules utaandika majarida mengi which will be used as operational manuals in many different parts of the world utatumika kama mitaala katika maeneo mengi and you will establish many schools na utaanzisha leaders na shule in many places beyond Tanzania nje ya Tanzania in Jesus mighty name you la jina la Yesu Kristo it is season katika nyakati hizi it is season ni wakati wako it is season ni wakati wako It is season. Ni majira. The Holy Spirit is saying I'm making him an apostle in the marketplace. Nani anasema ninakuweka mtume katika eneo la soko. Apostles in the marketplace. Kwa sababu tunahitaji mtume katika eneo la soko. He saying I'm making him an apostle in the marketplace. Mtume katika eneo la masoko. He is saying I'm making him an apostolic voice in the marketplace. Kuweka kwa mtume katika eneo la masoko. In as much as Daniel was a prophetic voice in the royal palace of a pagan king kama vile daniel alikuwa na sauti ya kinabii katika jengo la mfalme wa kipagani the holy spirit is saying you will establish altars for me in the marketplace anasema roho mungu anasema utasimamisha madhabahu kwa ajili yangu katika maeneo ya masoko those business projects that you will be doing in my name in the marketplace will be my altars hizo biashara utakazozifanya katika maeneo ya soko zitakuwa madhabahu yangu he is saying i'm sending his destiny helpers speedily na anasema naenda kuwaletea wale wasaidizi wa kimtakatifu from the east kutoka mashariki from the south kutoka kusini from the north kutoka kaskazini from the west kutoka magharibi he is saying i am sending his destiny helpers na kuletea wasaidizi wa kimtakatifu for him to rise as an apostolic voice in the marketplace wewe kuinuka kama mtume katika eneo la masoko and for him to be a bridge between the church and the government na kwa wewe kuwa daraja kati ya kanisa katika kanisa na kanisa na government na serikali on matters of leadership na utakuwa kiungo kati ya kanisa na serikali my favor upon him kwa sababu nimeachia kibali changu juu yako i release my favor upon him nimeachia kibali changu juu yako in jesus mighty name katika jina la yesu kristo it's an open heaven ni mbingu zilizo wazi It's an open heaven. Ni mbingu zilizo wazi. Father we thank you. Baba tunakushukuru. Father we thank you. Baba tunakushukuru. Father we thank you. Baba tunakushukuru. When we get time my brother just read the book of Daniel. Ukipata muda kaka ndugu yangu soma kitabu cha Daniel. He's telling me. Roho wa Mungu ananiambia. To tell you something which I don't normally do. Na kukwambia kitu ambacho sijawahi kukifanya. When you have read the book of Daniel, the Holy Spirit says you must write three books. Ukishasoma kitabu cha Daniel, utaandika vitabu vitatu. The Holy Spirit will teach you certain lessons from the book of Daniel. Roho Mtakatifu atakufundisha masomo mbalimbali kutopitia kitabu cha Daniel. About the importance of submission, the importance of prayer, the muhimu wa Umuhimu wa maombi, umuhimu wa kujinyenyekeza. Daniel is your role model. Daniel ni mfano wako. To dominate in the mountain of business and the mountain of governance. Kwa sababu alitawala ali kwenye eneo la biashara na eneo la utawala. It won't shock me if this man become becomes a very big advisor to people in government. Na haitanishangaza wewe ukiwa mtu mkubwa mshauri mkubwa kwenye serikali. That's why God wants him to read the book of Daniel. Ndio maana Mungu anakutaka usome kitabu cha Daniel. There are two mountains that God has reserved for him. Kwa sababu kuna milima miwili Mungu alianza. The mountain of business and the mountain of governance in this country. Na mlima wa biashara na mlima wa maagano kwenye hili. The mountain of business and the mountain of governance in this country mlima wa biashara na mlima wa serikali katika nchi I don't know whether my prayer cloth is there I want to put it on his shoulder as a prophetic action Sijui You know when a president is not correct they put something on his shoulders Na kuna kitu nataka kuweka kiuna So I want to do this as a prophetic action I also have a prayer cloth as well because I pray for his life Na nina na mimi na hii kwa ajili ya kuombea Of course this one this one has got a prophetic Let us just hold it hii ina neno la kinabii. It's written uh, Lion of the tribe of Judah. Anasema Simba wa Kanabii. It's written in English and in Hebrew. 
imeandikwa kiebrania lion of the tribe of juda na simba wa kabila la you know the tribe of juda is the tribe of royalty unajua kabila la yuda ni kabila la kifalme so i want to assess intercessors to stretch forth our hands to na, to this man nataka sisi kama waombaji tunyoshe mikono yetu kwa wao as intercessors kama waombaji so that as i put my prayer cloth on him na god weka, will release on him the anointing of government na ninapoweka hii kitambaa mungu atachilia upako wa kiserikali Father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare the anointing of government. Tunaachilia upako wa serikali. Upon your servant. Kajui ya mtumishi wako. We say Father may you anoint him to scale the mountain of government. Na Mungu aachilie upako wako kuinuka katika upako wa serikali. the interests of the kingdom. Kupeleka mapenzi ya ufalme. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. In Jesus name it is done. Katika jina la Yesu imekuwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is done. Imekuwa. It is done. Imekuwa. It is done. Imekuwa. Daniel was an intercessor and a government official. Daniel alikuwa mwombaji katika eneo la serikali. So some intercessors who want them to be in government. Na waombaji fulani watatakiwa kuwepo kwenye serikali. Is there anyone who is a civil servant who works for the government? Kuna mtu yote hapa anayefanya kazi kwa serikali. Anayefanya kazi serikali njoo hapa mbele, njoo hapa mbele. If you are a civil servant, if you work for the government. Kama wewe ni civil servant, come forward. Fanya kazi wa serikali, umeajiriwa serikalini, sogea hapa mbele. Oh, simpra ndo sketima. Sogea hapa mbele, wafanya kazi wa serikali. Wafanya kazi wa serikali, wafanya kazi wa serikali, sogea hapa mbele. I will do something which is strange. Where is my prayer cloth? Naomba ile nani langu, wafanye kazi wa serikali. I will with my prayer cloth. Nitawagusa na le vazi langu la maombi. Oh, simpro ndo sketima. I'm talking about mentals. So we will do symbolically habari ya mavazi. Ma Hii kama ishara ya roho ya Mungu. We release a royal anointing. Tunaachilia upako wa kifalme. Upon your life. Juu ya maisha yako. We declare that you will dominate. Ninatangaza kwamba utatawala. In your space in Jesus name. Katika eneo lako katika jina la Yesu. We release a royal anointing upon your life. Tunaachilia upako wa kifalme juu. We declare gyo. that you will dominate. Kwamba wewe utatawala. In the mountain of government. Katika mlima wa serikali. We release a royal anointing upon your life. Tunaachilia upako wa kiserikali juu yako. We declare that you will dominate. Tunatangaza kwamba utatawala. Katika eneo la serikali. Katika jina la Yesu. We release the royal anointing upon your life. Tunaachilia upako wa kiserikali. We declare that you will dominate. Tunatangaza kwamba utatawala. In the mountain of government. Katika eneo mlima wa kiserikali. In Jesus mighty name. Katika jina la Yesu. We release the royal anointing. Tunaachilia upako wa kiserikali upon your life. Juu ya maisha. We declare that you will dominate. Tunatangaza kwamba utatawala katika mlima wa katika la Yesu. We release the royal anointing upon your life. Tunachukua wa kiserikali wa kiserikali. We declare that you will dominate. Kwamba utatawala the mountain of government. Kwenye mfano mlima wa Jesus mighty name. Katika jina la Yesu. We release the royal anointing. Tunachukua wa kiserikali. We declare that you will dominate. Tunatangaza kwamba utatawala the mountain of government. Katika mlima wa serikali. God is going to promote you. I see Mungu ataenda kukuinua wewe. Yeah, you can stand my Unaweza kusimama ndugu yangu. I don't know how far you started. I see you. Sijui umeanza wapi mbali. I see you reading again. You know start. Ninaona unasoma tena. Reading like reading not reading the Bible but starting a course. Na na kuona kama unaenda so kwenye course. So God will give you grace to start a course. Mungu atakupa neema ya kwenda kwenye course. Will open doors of na, promotion. Kwenye hiyo course Mungu atafungua mlango wa kukupandisha cheo. Yes, there are doors of promotion that Kuna will open for you. Ya ku, ya kuinuliwa katika there are two transfers that are coming your way. Kuna kuhamishwa mara mbili. Don't be offended when they come. They will look like an inconvenience. One of the transfers will look like an inconvenience. Hiyo transfer will be for your blessing. Hiyo hiyo transfer moja itaonekana kama inakuharibu, lakini ni kwa I release the royal anointing. Naachilia upako wa kifalme. We say receive. Nasema pokea. Establishment and promotion in Jesus name. Wekwa na kuinuliwa katika jina la Yesu. We release the royal anointing upon your life. Upako wa kiserikali. We say be established on the mountain of uwekwe na uinyuliwe katika in Jesus mighty name serikali, we release the royal anointing upon your life upako wa we say be established on the mountain of government in Jesus mighty name you are blessed go and prosper go and prosper in the name of Jesus Christ
Go and prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We may sit down. Tunaweza tukakaa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. According to my watch it's now quarter past 12. Nina napoangalia hapa sasa ni kama saa sita na robo. Eh what I'm going to do in the interest of time. Ninachoenda kufanya kwa ajili ya muda. With the indulgence of the servant of God. Kwa ajili ya kibali cha watu mwingine. Who is wasting us? Wale ambao wametupokea. I'm going to just introduce what I'm going to be sharing in the afternoon. Ninaenda kuwa pa utangulizi wa kile nitakachokifundisha mchana. And share when we come back from from break. Na tutashirikiana tutakaporudi baada ya mapumziko. My message is entitled Kids to Growing as an Intercessor. Na ujumbe wangu ni funguo za kukua kama waombaji. Kids to Growing as an Intercessor. Funguo za kukua kama waombaji. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keys to growing as an intercessor. Ufungu funguo za kukua kama waombaji. How many people want to grow as intercessors? Wangapi wanataka kukua kama waombaji? You know, unajua when I look at a person like Daniel. Ninapomwangalia mtu kama Daniel. Or even before I look at Daniel, when I look at Moses. Na kabla sijamwangalia Daniel, ninapomwangalia Musa. Moses was a very powerful intercessor. Musa alikuwa muombaji mwenye nguvu sana. He could intercede in his heart without saying anything. Na alikuwa anaweza kuomba kwenye moyo wake bila kusema neno lolote. There is a passage in the Holy Scriptures where Moses was interceding by holding a stick in the air when they were fighting. You remember? Kuna kuna andiko kwenye 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 Biblia linaloonyesha Musa alikuwa anaomba akinyanyua tu fimbo hakuongea neno. They would begin to lose. Na aliposhusha ile fimbo walishinda. Wale kwa kwenye vita walishindwa. Until Aaron and the other servant mm. called her. Na mpaka Haruni na Huri. They sat one on the left and the other on the right. Na mmoja akakaa kushoto na kulia. Na wakashikilia mikono ya Musa. Until the war was won by Joshua and the soldier. Vita ilipoisha na kule kwa Joshua na Intercessors are very powerful. Waombaji ni Moses was not carrying anything which can kill anyone. Na Musa hakubeba chochote. He is the one who was actually fighting the war. Anacho kilicho kwa kinaua lakini kimsingi yeye ndo alikuwa anapigana ile vita. It shows you the power of intercession. Inaonyesha nguvu ya waombaji. Just imagine Moses was seated uh, they made him sit on a rock. Na and unajua, then they held up his hands. Walimsababisha Musa akae kwenye jiwe na kuingia. So that kutu his kutu. rod would not go down. Ili fimbo yake isushuke chini. Until the battle, the battle was co- completed. Mpaka vita ilipoisha. Until the battle came to an end. Mpaka vita ilipofikia mwisho. Until the valley they were they were fighting. Na wakashinda ile vita walikuwa wanapiga. Shows us the role of intercession. Inaonyesha nafasi ya muombaji. For churches to grow. Ili kanisa likue. Intercessors in those churches must grow first. Hao waombaji kwenye hilo kanisa lazima wakue kwanza. I will tell you a certain story. Nitawaeleza hadithi fulani. There is a certain church in the United States of America. Kuna kanisa fulani kule Marekani. For that church to grow God sent certain widows you know widows Na ili ile kanisa likuwe Mungu alituma wajane And these widows there were just a couple of them maybe around four Wao wajane walikuwa kama wanne hivi One man of God who wrote in his book Na mtu mmoja wa Mungu aliandika kwenye Biblia Story of that church Juu ya hilo historia hiyo kanisa They say uh, whenever people were being when the sinners prayer i mean when people were called to the front to receive christ na anasema watu walipokuwa na ito kuja kufanya maombi ya toba either all of these widows or at least two of them will be groaning like a woman who is in labor na mmoja au wawili au wote hao wajane walikuwa nalia kwa na kuomboleza kama mwanamke aliyeko aliyeko katika literally traveling and groaning like someone who is giving birth kama wanaugua ndani kama mtu ambaye yuko leba anazaa haleluya haleluya and the church began to expand na kanisa liliendelea kukua these widows will come early morning since they were just old women who were retired na hao wajane walikuwa nakuja mapema asubuhi kwa sababu walikuwa wamesha every morning they will come and pray in that church kila asubuhi walikuwa walikuwa nakuja kwenye madhabahu na kuomba and then by around 
uh, afternoon midday they will go back to their homes na mchana walikuwa narudi nyumbani mwao the church was expanding money was flowing in the church na kanisa likuwa na kuwa na pesa zilikuwa zinakuja kwenye but the challenge is that that church was a denomination so they shifted to the pastors na unajua tatizo lilikuwa ile lilikuwa dhehebu wakamhamisha mchungaji when they sent a pastor who was a theologian you see na wakampeleka mchungaji ambaye ni theologian these women these women they will be making noise when people are receiving Christ. Na kwa sababu hao akina mama walikuwa wanatoa kelele wakati watu wakipokea Yesu. So he silenced those women when the new pastor came. Huyu mchungaji mpya akawanyamazisha wale wakina mama. The new pastor he had a big position but was disconnected from God. Na huyu mchungaji alikuwa na nafasi kubwa lakini alitenganisha. These travelers these intercessors. Aliwanyamazisha hao waombolezaji hao mama walikuwa na ugua na kuomboleza and the church started to decline na kanisa likaanza kupungua and then whenever they were praying you could hear them groaning and praying in his office because na, the office was just next to the sanctuary na kila walipokuwa naomba yeye alikuwa so anawasikia so he stopped them so he stopped them from coming in the morning alikuwa anawasikia ofisini kwa sababu ofisi ilikuwa karibu kwa hiyo akawazuia wasije kanisani kuomba and then according to that book na kulingana na kile kitabu at that time when that man was silencing those intercessors na wakati ule yule mtu alipokuwa anawanyamazisha wale waombaji a group of devil worship and satanists they invaded that church na wakati huo huo kundi la wa, 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 watu wa shetani wakalivamia and they started to gossip those witons na wakaanza ku, 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 it's a true story that wakaanza kutoa kuto, kusengenya wale wa mama three of the witons they left wa, wa mama watatu wakaanza that church Wakaina only one was left mmoja pekee yake ilibaki haleluya haleluya and the church was cut out na ile kanisa likaanza kutsambaratika because according to that book some of the satanists they joined intercession others na, they joined present na, worship kulingana na mwandishi wa kitabu baadhi yao wa, 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 wa imani ya so shetani waliingia kwenye maombi na kwenye iba, kwenye kusifu na kuabudu the whole thing was coordinated by the devil na kila kitu kikashikwa na shetani for for the men of god to silence intercessors na kwa mtu wa mungu ili kuwanyamazisha waombaji to silence the voice of intercession kunyamazisha maombi ya waombaji which was covering the church with the glory of god ambao walikuwa wanafunika kanisa na utukufu when the voice of intercession was silenced wakati sauti ya maombezi ilipoyamazishwa the devil sent his messengers to go in because there was no akat, akatuma watumishi wake because there was no fire anymore kwa sababu kulikuwa mna moto tena Because when those women were crying there was fire in Kwa sababu wakati ule wakina mama walipokuwa naomboleza na kulia kulikuwa na moto. They would be crying in the natural part the heavenly will be releasing fire. Na walikuwa nalia kwenye kawaida lakini mbingu zilikuwa zinachilia moto. Moto kuvunja kila minyororo ya in drugs, people in prostitution they were living all of those wicked activities. Na watu waliokuwa kwenye ukahaba na kwenye madawa walikuwa na acha. In order to follow Christ. Ili kumfuata Yesu. When the voice of intercession was silenced. Wakati sauti ya wa waombaji ilipoyamazishwa. The church scattered. Na kanisa lilisambaratika. The church scattered. Na kanisa lilisambaratika. I fellowshiped, you know, before I started a, a, a ministry. Na kabla sijaanzisha huduma. I fellowshiped in different churches. Nili, three or four ch- churches. Nilijiunga na makanisa kama man, matatu manne hivi because i was moving a lot i i didn't stay in one place kwa sababu nilikuwa natembea sana sikusimama sikuwa mahali pamoja i was moja. moving from one place to another nilikuwa natoka kwenye eneo moja kwenye town ene. or city to another kwenye mji moja kwenda kwenye mji mwingine so in some places the church which i would be fellowshiping with was not existing na so wakati mwingine to join another church nili, ma, eneo nilienda so hakuwa na ile kanisa langu in one of the churches that i joined na kwenye moja wapo ya kanisa nilojiunga for no meaningful reason kwa, kwa sababu isiyojulikana a, a certain brother who was leading intercession was demoted na kaka aliyekuwa anaongoza maombi alishushwa cheo and someone who was not an intercessor was put as the head of intercessors na mtu ambaye hakuwa mwombaji akawekwa kuwa kiongozi wa maombi you know i tried to attend three all night prayers i was dozing off na nilienda during kwenye, an all night prayer kwenye maombi ya mkesha mara tatu nakuta kumefungwa this nani intercessor you will be preaching at around 12 am just imagine na utamona a sermon which is one hour one hour 10 minutes na not, huyo, he huyo, was not even preaching he was teaching huyo alikuwa anafundisha usiku kucha instead of us praying 
Badala ya sisi kuona. He was teaching like it's early morning and people were sleeping. Na alikuwa anafundisha kama asubuhi watu walikuwa na And many intercessors they started to leave intercession because it was so tiring. Na watu wengi walianza kuacha maombi kwa sababu all night prayers. Ilikuwa inachosha kwa sababu It will be all night prayers only in name. Ilikuwa inaitwa mkesha kwa jina tu. And some intercessors they started leaving that church even na, before I left myself. Na waombaji mbalimbali walianza kuanza kuondoka kwenye ile kanisa hata kabla mimi sijaondoka. And that church scattered. Now it's a, it's a shell of its former self. Na ile kanisa likatawanyika na kimekuwa kipande kidogo tu. A church which had nearly 700 members. Na kanisa lilikuwa na watu zaidi ya 700. Now the membership is around 100, 150. Na sasa na kama watu 100, 150 tu. The building project that they were doing. Na ujenzi ulikuwa unafanyika. 14 years ago it's still not complete. Miaka zaidi ya 14 haijamakamilika. Because they interfered with intercession. Kwa sababu waliingilia waombaji. Prayer is the heart of ministry. Maombi ni moyo wa huduma. Prayer is the heart of ministry. Maombi ni moyo wa huduma. I know someone will say but the teaching the word is the heart of ministry. Lakini najua mtu mmoja anasema mafundisho ni moyo wa huduma. If preaching is the art of ministry kama mafundisho ni moyo wa huduma what did Jesus do before he started preaching Yesu alifanya nini kabla hajaanza kuhudumu spent, spent 40 days in the wilderness alitumia siku 40 kwenye jangwa connecting with God the Father akijiunganisha na Mungu Baba not only 40 days sio siku 40 tu Jesus Christ spent 30 years not teaching na Yesu alitumia miaka 30 hakuwa na ubiri. Do you think for for 29 years Jesus was not praying? Je, yeah, unafikiri kwa miaka ile 29 yote kama Jesus? He was obviously praying. Alikuwa haombi. Alikuwa naomba. Because at 12 years of age. Kwa sababu katika miaka 12. See him in the temple. Tumemwona hekaluni. You know asking the teachers of the law. Akiwafuuliza waalimu wa sheria. And answering them as well. Na akiwauliza akijibu maswali. So obviously was praying. Kwa hiyo alikuwa akiomba. For 30 years. Kwa miaka 30. And then on the 30th year before he entered ministry. Na katika mwaka wa 30 kabla hajaingia kwenye huduma. He prayed. Aliomba. If there is something which Jesus Christ did continuously. Na kama hicho ni kitu ambacho Yesu alikifanya kwa kweli. He was hanging on the cross. Hata alipokuwa ameninginia msalaba. Kabla hajafa. Was to talk to the Father. Alikuwa anaongea na Baba. Through prayer. Kwa maombi. I'm not saying prayer is the only thing that we must do. Na sijasema maombi ndio kitu pekee tunachotakiwa kufanya. But prayer is the heart of a successful ministry. Na lakini nachosema maombi ni moyo wa mafanikio ya huduma. If you want to, the men of God shared for with us very deep stuff. Na huyu mtumishi wa Mungu amezishirikisha mambo ya msingi sana. He said mazito sana. He said when you see non believers doing something in a certain way. Unapoona wasioamini wanafanya jambo katika eneo fulani. It might be inawezekana that uh, they are deceived maybe they are doing it in a wrong way wanaweza wakawa wanafanya kwa njia isiyo sawa sawa but there will be an element of revelation in whatever they are doing lakini kutakuwa na aina fulani ya ufunuo katika lile wanachokifanya prayer is useless kama maombi hayana maana why do muslims pray five times a day kwa nini waislamu wanasali mara tano kwa siku you know right now on earth there are more than 1.1 billion muslims na unajua zaidi sasa hivi kuna zaidi ya waislamu bilioni moja. B bilioni moja. More than 1.1 billion Muslims. Zaidi ya bilioni moja. It's one of the fastest growing religions on earth. Ni moja wapo ya dini zinazokua kwa haraka. I'm not telling you a prophet. I'm Siku, just telling you facts. Sikutolee unabii huu ni mambo yaliyo halisi. You know <laughs> in the place where I live there are not many muslims but when they when a, a muslim businessman arrives in a place na pale kwenye eneo nalokaa hakuna waislamu wengi lakini mfanyabiashara wa kiislamu alipofika kwenye eneo they link with other muslims they look for land to build a place to pray na walitafuta waislamu wengine wakajenga eneo la kuomba 
na ndicho unachofanya kila wakati. Their church buildings are not for doing variety shows or other things. Na maeneo ya mini prayer centers. Ya maeneo yao ni kwa ajili ya maombi, sio kwa ajili ya kufanya vitu. They vitumini. colonize places through prayer. Wanatawala maeneo kupitia maombi. They pray a lot. Wanaomba sana. I'm not saying we should pray five times a day. Sisemi tuombe mara tano kwa siku. Do you know how many times we should pray if we are really serious? Na unajua tunatakiwa kuomba mara ngapi kama sisi tunamaanisha? Ngoja nikuonyeshe. Look at your neighbor and say, do you know how many times we should pray? Na muulize jirani yako unajua ni mara ngapi unatakiwa kuomba? Look at your neighbor and say, do you know how many times we should pray? Muulize jirani yako unajua mara ngapi unatakiwa kuomba? <laughs> do you know how many times we should pray? Je, unajua ni mara ngapi unatakiwa kuomba? Hallelujah. 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 Who knows the answer? Nani anajua jibu? If you know the answer tell me. Kama unajua jibu niambie. According to the book of Psalm 119 how many times should we pray? Kulingana na Zaburi ya back to Zaburi Bible school. Zaburi ya 119 unatakiwa tuombe mara ngapi? What does the psalm say? Sasa tumeingia kwenye somo la Biblia. Zaburi inasemaje? I've given you the chapter your truth is to look for the verse. Nime, the nime challenge is mlango, that the, 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 the challenge sana. is that the verse is 176. Sasa tatizo mistari ni 100. The verses are more than 100. Na mistari ni zaidi ya 100. There there is a verse which tells you how many times. Kuna mstari ambao unakueleza uombe mara ngapi? Zaburi ya 119. The Muslims they do five times. Waislamu wanafanya mara tano. We Christians how many times should we pray? Sisi wa Kristo tuombe mara ngapi? It's there in Psalm 119. Kuna iko pale kwenye Zaburi ya 119. If you find it lift up your hand. Ukiona nyosha mkono wako. Hmm? What's the verse? You, you can give him the microphone. Ni mstari wa ngapi? give him the mic to talk yes which which verse because others are still looking for the verse nataka kupata mstari hallelujah is look, still looking for the verse natafuta ule mstari it's seven times anasema mara saba it's what's the verse 164 164 seven times a day I Mara praise saba. you because of your righteous judgments. Mara saba. Seven times. You see the Muslims they do five. Waislamu wanafanya tano. You and I and David we must do seven. Wewe na mimi na Daudi tufanye mara saba kwa siku. It depends on you you can do seven times in the morning. Unaweza wakafanya mara saba Because asubi. you are not religious. Kwa sababu wewe you can spread your seven times. Au unaweza kaigawa kwa mara to you under the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now inategemea umeongozwa na God. I'm not introducing a new religion. See, I'm, I'm showing you be. what caused David to be successful. Na naonyesha kilichoandikwa kule. That's why David was never defeated in war as a young person or as an old man. Ndio maana Daudi hakushindwa alipokuwa yes. kijana. Yes. You you can give him the mic. You will read it in Swahili. Yes. Soma kwa Kiswahili. Yes. We thank you Lord. 164 Zaburi mia Zaburi 119 mstari wa 164 nasema mara saba kila siku na kusifu kwa sababu ya hukumu za za haki yako. You you can read it again my brother. Yes, read it again. Some it in the here. Mara saba kila siku na kusifu kwa sababu ya hukumu za haki yako. You see, so if if a Christian is only praying in the morning and uh, 
when they eat in the evening and also when they go to sleep because they are afraid of witches and wizards. Kama wa Kristo wanaomba asubuhi wanapoamka. They are at three over seven. Na wanaomba saa kulala kwa sababu wanaogopa wachawi na washirikina. They are at three over seven. The Muslims will be already ahead. Wao wana mara tatu ya saba waislamu watakuwa mbele yao. And who will command the ordinances of heaven to cooperate with them? Na nani atakaye amuru mbingu za mbingu zifanye kitu? It's the one who has got, who has got more frequency. In the heavenlies. Mara nyingi ndio anaamuru. You know when we preach sermons we are preaching sermons to each other they are it's horizontal. Na unajua tunapofanya mahubiri tunahubiri kwa mtu mmoja. But when we are praying kwa 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 horizontal. It's vertical. Na tunapo it speaks directly to the heavenlies. Tunazungumza na mbingu. You know there is a verse the the man of God usually quotes it. Kuna Where mstari, we need to command our mornings. Kuna mstari yes. ambao unasema tutaenda kuamuru asubuhi. <laughs> we want you to asubu. tell us the verse or Kuna, any other person who knows the verse. Kuamuru asubuhi zetu. Yes, he knows the verse. Yes, ju- ju- just give, give, give him the mic so that uh, he can read it. You, you you see the way I'm operating is very spontaneous. Na unaona hapa napofanya kazi iko iko nani haraka? Ayubu 38 mstari wa 12 in English it's job what job 38 verse 12 verse 12 verse 12 yes you can read it je umeamuru asubuhi asubuhi tangu siku zako zilipoanza umeajurisha mapambazuko mahali pake yapate kuishika misho ya nchi waovu wa kumutwe wakawe mbali nayo <laughs> so god was asking You know Job alikuwa anamuamuru anamuuliza Ayubu whether he has ever commanded the morning je umeamuru asubuhi and then when we read in the new testament na unaposoma agano jipya Jesus said all things are possible to him who believes na mambo yote yanawezekana kwake yeye amini because we are no longer living like during the time of Job na hauishi kama wakati ule wa Ayubu Do you know why Muslims they wake up early morning? Unajua kwa nini Waislamu wanaamka mapema? Make a lot of noise over the city. Mapema sana na kuachilia sauti juu ya mji. They will be commanding the morning. Wanaamuru asubuhi. I I once read a, a certain small book. Nilisoma wakati fulani kitabu. Of a certain pastor an evangelist who was targeted by Satanists in Nigeria. Na kitabu kilichoandikwa na mchungaji alikuwa na windwa na wa Nigeria. Na kwa crime, do you know his crime? Sata- They say every morning at around 5. Anaambia kosa lake kila asubuhi saa. He would carry his mobile PA system and go and start shouting at the first terminus. Alikuwa anaenda na kipaza sauti pale And also pray in that open market place. Na kuhubiri na kuomba kwenye kwenye stand na kwenye soko. So Emmanuel Amos says he was disturbing the lot in Satanism. Na they couldn't do their things early morning. Na akasema wanaharibu vitu vyao hawa watu wa shetani. Which is why in Psalm chapter 63. Ndio maana katika Zaburi The Bible says early will I seek you not later in the day. Anasema asubuhi nitakutafuta sio sio mchana. Muslims and other people have already done their prayers. Na, They have already commanded the morning for na, you. Na baadaye tayari waislamu na wengine wamesha You are just you are sure. just drifting because of the morning which has been commanded. Wewe unabebwa kwa ajili ya asubuhi iliyoshaamriwa. They have already closed the doors for you and opened doors for themselves. Wameshafunga milango kwa ajili yako na fungua milango kwa ajili yako. When you go to the bank they will say ah your file your file come next week the director is gone to Israel na, na, for a mi- business conference. Kienda, you forgot to sign your file. Kap, unapenda bank to inspect your file. And your things will delay until China introduces a new product in the market. Na ukienda benki kupata kupata mkopo unakuta wanaambia umechelewa manager yuko Israeli kwa 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 kongamano na kabla hapo watachelewa na mpaka baadaye China wataingia na kuleta nani jambo. Prayer is very critical. kwenye soko. Is very critical. Maombi ni jambo la muhimu sana. I don't belong to any political party. Myself. Mimi, mimi si, siko kwenye chama I don't participate chasi. in politics. Sijihusianishi kwenye siasa. But in different countries I've met state leaders. Na lakini katika nchi mbalimbali not education. Nimejihusi nime nimekutana na viongozi wa serikali sio kwa ajili ya 
elimu lakini kwa ajili ya maombi because let me show you something do you know that politicians they don't need anything from pastors na unajua wana siasa hawahitaji chochote kutoka you can promise them money because most christians they don't even have money that can Wezi kwa politicians pesa kwa sababu wa kristo wengi hawana pesa but if you are prayerful and you are connected to god lakini kama wewe ni muombaji na umeunganishwa na mungu they will need you watakuhitaji they will call you they will need you watakuita i know it from personal experience ninajua kutokana na maisha yangu utamuliza mke wangu hallelujah 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 one day at a certain place without notice i was called to the state house na siku moja mahali fulani niliitwa ikulu i was called to by one of the children of the big man called me na mmoja mmoja wa watoto wa mtu mkubwa alinita kwenda kwa I spoke to the big man and then we prayed na nilipofika no appointment no nothing no security vetting nikaongea na people saluting the car that was carrying me na akukua no political party card nothing hakukua na check up prayer prayer is my passport na hakukua na check up prayer ilikuwa ni prayer is my passport ilikuwa ni passport yake ya kuingia because jesus prayed i pray kwa sababu yesu aliomba na mimi niliomba because Hannah prayed when she was barren i pray na kwa sababu ana aliomba alikuwa dancing to move i pray vitu vikiacha kutokea naomba when things are moving i pray vitu vikitokea naomba when things are stationary i pray vitu vikisimama naomba i pray in the morning naomba asubuhi i pray during the day naomba mchana i pray in the evening naomba jioni i pray at night naomba usiku i don't wait for others to pray siongoje watu wengine i just pray naomba Look at your neighbor and say just pray. Mwambie mwangalie jirani yako mwambie wewe omba. Say just pray. Mwambie wewe omba. Say just pray. Wewe mwambie wewe omba. The secret of John Wesley which caused John Wesley to start a world wide denomination. It was Syria, prayer. Syria John Wesley iliyomsababisha afanye huduma ya kidunia na kanisa lake lisambaye ilikuwa ni maombi. John Wesley was not a prophet. It didn't move in healing and all of this other stuff. Na John Wesley hakuwa nabii akufanya akutembea kwenye uponyaji na hivi. Yeye alikuwa na ombi. Read his history. Soma my my I, I read a certain ancient writing. Ni, nimeosoma about John Wesley. Nimesoma andiko la nyakati za nyuma sana la John Wesley. They say I'm not saying fasting like that. They say at one time John Wesley was so weak from prayer and fasting. Na inasema sikwambii ufunge kama huyo. Inasema kuna wakati alikuwa ame ame ana dhaifu kwa sababu ya kuomba na kufunga. To such an extent that ashes had to hold him. Na ilifika mahali ilibidi wa wahudumu wa, wa wamshikilie. Not because he was under the anointing he was weak from fasting. Na si kwamba alikuwa kwenye upako alikuwa dhaifu kwa ajili ya kuomba na kufunga. Look at the denomination that is started. It died long ago. Na angalia dhebu ambalo lilianzisha imekufa. But the, the denomination which is started is still expanding. Na ile kanisa limeendelea kupanuka zaidi. You look zaidi. at people like Martin Luther. He, the man was very prayerful. Na muangalie mtu kama Martin Luther. Extremely prayerful. Alikuwa anaomba, look alikuwa muomba. Look at the work that is started. Angalia kile alichokianzisha. People who are not even German or white they still continue the work that is started. Watu ambao sio weupe wala wa Germany wanaendelea na ile kazi aliyoanzisha. Because he planted a seed in the heavens. Kwa sababu alipanda mbegu kule mbinguni. Which is still commanding alignment centuries later. Ambayo inaendelea kuamuru mambingu ziendelee kuwa pamoja nayo. We exist in this generation katika nani majira anaendelea. Tunaishi katika kipindi hiki. We exist here in Tanzania. Tunaishi hapa Tanzania to cause things to align from Kus, the heavenly kusababisha mambo yajipange kutoka mbinguni in jesus mighty name katika jina la yesu i long for a time when every morning because of the spirit of god lakini kuna wakati kwa sababu ya ya roho ya bwana na subiri wakati kwa sababu there will be noise everywhere kutakuwa na kelele kila mahali kwa sababu because of ya Christians will be doing morning glory kwa sababu ya wakristo watakao kuwa wanafanya masifu ya asubuhi until we saturate until we saturate mpaka tutakapojaza anga cities and communities ma miji na ja, maeneo ya jamii with the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ kwa uelewa wa Mungu na juu ya Yesu Kristo in Jesus mighty name katika jina la Yesu Kristo so in the afternoon after the break i will share on 
keys to growing as intercessors. Na baadaye mchana nitakufundisha habari. Right now I could not preach my own sermon. I to write on his sermon. Na asa hizi sikuhubiri njili nini? I to write ma, on ma, the sermon of the servant of God. Mahubiri yangu nilandia lift ya mahubiri ya I felt request that he made. Na kila alichokiomba nikifanya. And I believe God answered the ans. Na ninaamini Mungu amejibu. And that we are going to testify. Na tutaenda kushuhudia. In Jesus mighty name. Katika jina la Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah hallelujah. Ebu naomba usimame kidogo. Sikia nikwambie siri moja. Mungu anapopita katika utaratibu huu lazima kumwabudu. Lazima kumwabudu. Lazima tumwadhimishe Mungu. Present worship tafadhali kwa dakika kama tano kumi. Tumwabudu Mungu. Usiombe mwabudu tu Mungu. Umeinuliwa, umeinuliwa, umeinuliwa juu. Umbaji na ukusifu watakatifu tunakuabudu. Fambe umeinuliwa, wana umeinuliwa. Ume
inasema hivi Biblia inasema katika Zaburi ya 89 Jina langu litainua pembe yake Nataka tuliitie jina la Bwana Adonai Shama Shama Elohim El Adonai Shama Shama Elohim Come 
ที่นี